Look, if I had that power, I would exercise it every day, so don't yeah. give me that shit. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to Max's Mad Mythic Mercenaries, presented by Arbitrary Hero. I am your Dungeon Master Cameron, although today I'm just a forum moderator. Today, instead of playing the game, uh, we've been on hiatus for maybe a month or so. Um, we're getting back into the swing of things, and we're starting off with the Q&A. We got a bunch of questions from you all on Discord, uh, Reddit, I think maybe Facebook and Twitter as well. We're, uh, we're going to talk through these questions, and uh, this is the chance for the players to also ask me things out of character, and it'll be on camera, so we'll, we'll, you'll get a, a glimpse behind the scenes on some stuff. Uh, Does this make you D uh, Dungeon Master of Ceremonies? Yes, the DMC. DMC. Um, <laughs> run it. Which, let's let's uh, we'll go through and just introduce everyone real quick. Um, first off, uh, the best man at my wedding, we have Nate. Nate, how's it going? How's oh. life been? Uh, life has been uh, pretty good, actually. We are scheduling out all of our travel plans and and stuff, and it's going to be busy, but it's going to be really good. We got plans to go check out Winnipeg um, that, uh, that we just came up with the other day. Uh, looking forward to seeing that. We just got back from uh, Lake Sakakawea. It is the third largest man-made uh, reservoir of water in the country. Um, wow. Very, very pretty. And uh, we're getting a lot of hiking in. So, yeah. Nice. Uh, trying to get back in shape and not die of, uh, you know, circulatory issues at, at the desk in the office. And Here with a... And Nate obviously plays there Roland Santoro. Yes, um, yes. I got Here him. with a fresh coat of paint, it is Cherie. Cherie plays Alu Dracar. Cherie, how's life been treating you? Um, well, it has been a while, so I had a hurt, we'll go with, I hurt my foot a month ago, Ooh. like right after the last session that we had. Why? What did your and foot do to you? I didn't do it on purpose, Cameron. <laughs> it knew and what it did. Personal. I've it's been personal. walking on it for a month and a half, and Ian was like, you're not taking this seriously enough, so I've been to the doctor for the last couple of weeks. We finally discovered that I have arthritis in both of my feet bunions oh, no. on both of my feet and bone spurs on both of my feet which is why the bones on Double the right it. foot that hurts are grinding together causing a lot of pain so oh. the last couple of weeks have been interesting for me <laughs> what what's the like procedure do we chop you off at the ankles and put some wheels on or yeah, basically. Roller skate I mean, everywhere. We put yeah. her down at this point, really. I mean, yeah. She's yeah. Like weeks I don't like the look of that leg. Man. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I'm sick of this shit. I've been hauling her around all month. It's, She's done. It's, you either, <laughs> yeah, you either uh, get put down or you live life like Xanadu in the movie. There you Just go. Just in time for summer, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Yay. Awesome. Um, on top of that, though. Good news is that my niece is coming to visit this summer. Ooh. And we get to her for an extra week and a half. Oh, fuck. And then Auntie gets to take her home. Which niece is this? The old, the well, one. not Mia. My brother's daughter. I was going to say, I was like, which <laughs> niece yeah. is this at this point? Yeah, no, I don't think Sam and Beth are ready to let go of her yet. No, I don't think so. But think so. Rena's only four, so I'm like really excited mm -hmm. that my brother mm -hmm. and sister-in-law were like, oh, okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Keep it alive, it's fine. Next we fine. have our resident artiste, uh Danny, who plays Sprocket. Danny, oh yeah, the blur the blur prevents us from seeing <laughs> what you're drawing. We got the idea. Oh, it's so great. Yeah, it's such a beautiful drawing. Sorry you guys missed that. Hidden yeah. for reveal. He doesn't want to yeah, <laughs> so vain wanna... and triumphant. How's, oh god. How's uh how's life? Oh my there? god. It's, it's pretty good. Uh, speaking of veiny, it's actually a hairless cat I'm drawing for the first ever cat stream that I'm doing on Tuesday. Cool. Yeah. Question of the day, uh, by the way, for anybody in the comments, <laughs> does anybody feel bad for Hannah? Just put it in the comments and let us know. If you Why? Feel bad for her. Why? Well, yeah, there's, there's one big orange reason right now. Oh, know. big orange reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Roar she with was it. there on January 6th. Yeah, she was. Yeah. <laughs> He's great! <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, but yeah, God. Danny, how's uh, so you're getting ready for the the first ever uh, cat stream, which is exciting. What else has been going on? Yeah, I've recently picked up carving, and I've done a couple of the carving streams lately, where I just kind of chop into a block of balsa with some knives and haven't cut myself yet. So hey. I'm doing pretty good. good Super yeah. fun, and got some good reception on that. Special shout out to I popped in and I was able to enjoy. You were doing an Animal Crossing character. Oh yeah, um, which is yeah, really Ruby. cute. Yeah, I liked I liked that a lot. That was really awesome. Uh, I, of no. course, am the DM Cameron. I used to play uh, Wilhelm Swingpike. I still do. He's just an NPC now. Um, on my end, life is going pretty good. Um, Han and I have been kayaking and hiking a bunch. That's been wonderful, enjoying the, the weather outside. And I am. I started a campaign but after this one started, and I am one session away from finishing it. Uh, so I am so excited. Rhyme of the Frostmaiden. Uh, they are level 12. They've got one session left. I'm excited to close the book on another D&D campaign. Uh, and that's been about it. It's been nice. Because um, this one's never going to close. No. Well, <laughs> to, to, to finish a D&D campaign, you have to play the D&D campaign. True. Uh, it's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while. It's been a while. There it is. I could. Thank you. Thank oh, you, DMC. Ian. DMC, DMC, here we go. Next is, as we all know, not just my better half, but my best half. Aww. Hannah. Aww. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, no, wasn't, no. I wasn't looking the at the camera. Good half. The good half. I wasn't looking at the camera when I, I didn't see you just took a massive bite of whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to keep <laughs> talking to give you some time to chew. Um, your pink hair You're looks You're never nice. that sweet to me. <laughs> Only in public. Uh, I, I, it's just this as never in no one suspects. This is recorded never evidence in public. for the eventual court case that comes. I need a yeah, <laughs> no ones. Yeah. yeah, Hannah, how how are things going on your end? Um, they're going okay. Uh, rehearsals are going to start at the end uh, of this month for Merry Wives of Windsor, which should be fun. Ooh. Um, I've gotten into uh, cozy mysteries as far as reading. So I got three new books today because I'm a 60 year old at heart. And um, we've been kind of. Hey, my wife's the one with arthritis, so. Been... <laughs> <laughs> Hannah has the soul of a 60 year old. Soul, I do. Yeah. Let me yeah. tell you, I'm so excited. So these cozy mysteries. Uh, oh, there's yeah, do you an want to author... show the covers? I am. Hold on. I'm getting there, kid. There's the co <laughs> the author is Linda Riley. Um, and she does this series called a grill their grill the cheese mystery series. So this one is called Up to No Gouda. Oh my god. I know. <laughs> and then her second one is called No Par No Foul. That's Bob's burgers level puns. Mm -hmm. I love it. And I each one it. has a okay. little puppy on the top. Each on one the has cover. a little puppy. Oh, um, it gets better and better. And the so, worst yeah, part been... about this is that I'm so here for it. I'd read those two. <laughs> yeah, like some some girls sure. like the romance novels. I like the uh, sure you got cozy back to mysteries. Mm. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Especially <laughs> now that you're basically why don't you invalid. like us? <laughs> uh, an invalid. Yeah. Look at this. Uh, oh. Um, should I share our kayaking, oh. our kayaking uh, catastrophe, or no? We don't have time. If you, can make it, if you can make it like thirty seconds. I cannot make it thirty seconds, so I'll share after we're all done with this. I'll Look share the here. catastrophe. Post yeah. credit sequence. Fuck you, uh, internet. Yeah, yeah. Keep, keep an eye out for the deleted scenes. Uh, and a a man who uh, has recently come to accept that he is going to be a long term care partner uh, for his wife until her deathbed. <laughs> Ian, <laughs> Ian, who plays Fen Merrick. Ian, how's it going? How 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 are you through the grieving process? Uh, I'm drinking. <laughs> That's it. That's Denial all you need or to know. acceptance. Yeah. Yep. I'm a drinking yep. as ever. That's all I got for you. Nice. That, no more news. So, I don't like that <laughs> that we're uh, we're getting ready to like carve right, my knee and brand it. Writing you <laughs> off immediately. Right. Hey, look, That'll she's get. pretty. That's all I care about. That's all. Yeah. I care about. Literally right. everything. So we you have hang a, You're breaking up. a big list of questions. Um, I'm just going to read them. I'm going to go kind of one by Huge. one. And in between Huge every list. question Huge. will be the opportunity for the uh, players to ask me questions. Uh, and we'll just go back and forth until we're down through the list. So first one 
And this is in, I believe this is uh, either in the order or super close to the order that we received them in. Um, the first one is from Poke Cheryl on Discord. Thank you, Poke Cheryl. Um, so this is a two-parter, which, you know, that's cheating, but whatever. Um, for her, we'll allow it. Uh, for all the players, so we'll go down the line. If your player character mm -hmm. dies in the campaign, what would you want to play next? So in my mind, this is wording, what would you want to play next in this campaign, not in another campaign? Yeah. Um, so yeah. I guess the first question is, if your player character dies, are you just done? Or are you sticking around and finishing it out with a new character? But we'll start, um, what is my order? Nate, if sure. Roland dies, I actually think we have an answer, of, 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 a like, solid answer for this one. Uh, uh, but... you, you have an answer. You want me to play a certain character. Um, you want me to play Brenda. Yes. Um, if I if Roland That's ever dies, right. which I'd be down to do. If not, I would think if like if I was one of my own characters because I have a a whole like backlog of them. As I don't a... want to interrupt, but just the fact that Cameron has an idea about this should mm -hmm. really scare Roland. I just want to say, well, it. yeah, I know he's. Reason, like, I, okay. The reason why is because Brenda, like, she already knows mm -hmm. all of you. She's already friend. Like, I don't have to spend a session like introducing mm -hmm. someone new. It's just. Brenda, Roland's dead. Brenda's pissed and wants to avenge him. Instant, like, new party makeup. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's the easiest thing for me. It writes itself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he gets, he gets but, excited. He gets aroused if, at convenience for his you, story. If you, if you were to introduce a new character, who would it be, Nate? Um, I was fiddling with a, with an idea for a, a rogue character that I wanted to run by you and, I wanted them to basically be really good with improvised weapons. Oh, interesting. Like, he just picks up, like, a fucking broken bottle or whatever, but he deals with a lot of the criminal element because I figured that would play into uh, Waterdeep a little bit better. I uh, think that's an interesting idea. And then, Leah, you could maybe pick, like, from one of the factions that you're associated with or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, that'd be it's, cool. I like it's it. It's interesting, Nate. It's not cool enough for Cameron. No, no. Yeah. I, again, I, at this point, you guys are very powerful. It's actually quite difficult for me to kill you, I think, without mm -hmm. bringing to bear the force needed to end the campaign. Like, I'll, I mm -hmm. think at this point, I'll either kill the whole party or everyone's going to live through it. In the earlier levels, there was opportunity for me to, like, kill off single people. Um, yeah. Mostly. But we'll see. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Shuri. Yeah. This one would break my heart if alu died uh but i like what would you do if alu died who would you play next i don't know i i'm thinking cameron if alu died we would need to play as the rat baby Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Cool. i like that like there uh inhab like inhabited races corpse. yeah we could we could come up with something a, cool there a reborn basically like that would end up being I've like doubled a full down cleric. on this I, that that would have to be the the thing mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> hey mega oh my kitty tail <laughs> sorry that's okay, my but... toe that's I my toe <laughs> um i dig it all right danny what about sprocket would you go gelzar <laughs> like would you just uh, yeah I, I think that'd probably be the easiest one because i really like playing artificers yeah. Uh, it'd be nice to just step right in there and we already have like an established character. Mm -hmm. um, if I if I did a new character though, I think uh, actually or Featherfoot, maybe I'd play as him. I don't know what he does, but I just love that character. Oh, Flutterfoot would I think he'd have to be a bard, right? Yeah. Is makes... he a bard or maybe a rogue because he's all acrobatics and stuff? I don't know. Bard rogue would be kinda cool, trying to cover his tracks and tie up any loose ends with Xanathar so he doesn't come hunting down his family. Yeah. Uh but if I made a new one, I think there's the mastermind. There's like some rogue that's like a specifically a criminal, like a a criminal investigator, and like well, there's the there's the inquisitive type. mind, there's the inquisitive uh, rogue, and there's also a mastermind rogue. Whereas it's the inquisitive, inquisitive is more of a detective, and then the mastermind yeah. is literally like I'm a spy master. I dig yeah, it. it'd be the inquisitive because we're this far in the campaign now. At this point, someone else might pick up on the trail from the outside, and be easy to introduce them into it. I mm -hmm. dig that. That's that's a really cool idea. Mm -hmm. Hannah, what about you? If Holly Reese dies, I, let me let me hold on. I'm, I'm going to make a mental guess. Are, are you going to play a barbarian? Yeah, yeah. She's uh, going to play the dragon. 
That'd be my second choice. If Holly Reed like, died, Holly. I would just ask to, yeah, I would just play Ollie Kazarathesis. Yes. <laughs> and I would just go on a rampage around the town. There'd just be pure chaos. I'd pull a max. Gotcha. So you can never oh, kill her, her now. ever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think we knew that already that, like, if Holly dies, the campaign's over. Yeah, yeah. I would kill, I would, like, just go into a rampage. <laughs> Destroy the town and find Never Ember's treasure myself. On your own? On my own. <laughs> All right. And not share it. I love it. Shocker. Ian, <laughs> if Fen dies, tell us about Gen Merrick. Okay, yeah. So here's the thing. This is like this is gonna be super like disappointing to most people, probably predictable though. Um so I obviously so anybody who doesn't know, I'm a rookie. Like this is the first campaign really that I've played. This is a three-year campaign at this point. I don't think it's you true. can call yourself That's true, but, like, the reason I say that is that, as a predicate is because, like, I don't know what my other options really are, to be honest. Like, I know yeah. generally, but I don't, like, know a ton. We made, it. Yeah, we made Proto-Fen in my homebrew, yeah. and then right. and then so, we made Real Fen still, this one. I, I get what you're saying. It's yeah. You've been so a my real answer, whole time. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So th with that as a predicate, my real answer is anything but a fucking ranger. Yeah. The <laughs> only yeah. thing that I've learned is that ranger is deeply deeply hard mode yeah for yeah. anybody and like I could it's just see, yeah. i could see fen being reincarnated as a barbarian i like the idea so cameron has has speculated that so like with our next level up like taking on like uh, dual classing and shit like that like mm -hmm. i might i might do that like that's the thing i'm considering yeah primarily because ranger is dog shit you like I don't to want deal, to be like the guy who bitches all the time. But you like, like to Rangers deal damage, shit. and Barbarian is the easy mm -hmm. way for you to start dealing more damage. Plus, yeah. plus Kinda, yeah. the, here's the combo, the, the what, what I think will, will get your dick rock hard. Um, oh my god. You uh, you can Sorry. take a, a racial feat called Elven Accuracy. Look at my accuracy, wife blushing. Oh, Elven Accuracy. Yeah. With Elven Accuracy, every time you attack with advantage, instead of rolling two dice, you get to roll three and take the highest number. So the yeah. As with a that barbarian, is... you get an ability called Reckless Attack, which you can just be like, hey, guess what? I'm going to attack with advantage now. So, so it's I'm basically... Speak... Yeah. I'm going to speak to Cheryl specifically because she probably has noticed this. Um, I'm caught between wanting to play my way, but also trying to extend and sort of try and be more of a story character, like build that side of which which i generally don't give a shit about but i try to do better on that side mm -hmm. so i like i make an effort and the problem is what you just described does not fit the kind of character that i wanted fen to be like i wanted him to be more like an aragorn type and not like a legolas type mm -hmm. so but you're describing like legolas so if i build into that it's more legolas and i don't know like i just like i don't want to like abandon all that shit yeah. but well and that whatever. is why for those free level ups which we can talk about i don't know if we talked about uh on screen no we did at the end of the last session we played alu <laughs> is actually one level higher than the rest of the party because she right. got a free level in cleric and so for every other party member there's an opportunity to make decisions um hannah has already kind of cut herself off from one of those options that she has um, but i think fen i think you could have you can choose between barbarian if you do certain story things or fighter if you do certain story things so the mm -hmm. fighter might be more of the aragorn side of things that you're looking yeah for. yeah because like but the alternative is like to your point like i could be super powerful maybe if i did elven accuracy which yeah. by the way has been on my list of things that i might choose for the last i don't know six level ups probably mm -hmm. it's yeah. always coming like second or third choice yeah and i keep yeah. skipping it for the reason i just said so i don't mm -hmm. know we'll see so, uh, the question, the second part of the question is directed to me for Cameron. The campaign has changed a lot from the original premise. What has been the biggest surprise for you running it? Um, that's... I, that you know what? Fen has lived this long. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I think... Like, is it cheating if I say the biggest surprise for me is that I'm the dungeon master? <laughs> I mean, yes. that's that's stating the obvious, I guess, but... You could um, say it. I think my biggest surprise has been, um, genuinely, uh, like I, I've played with Danny and Nate before. I know their style of play, um, but Hannah and Cherie and Ian came into this pretty green. 
um, seeing everyone lean into certain storytelling stuff when they get into it has been the biggest exciting surprise for me. So uh, Hannah getting super actually like mad at me when she failed some history checks and killed her father in the past. Cherie <laughs> like leaning so hard into her religion and like I didn't even think about the like time loop stuff that was happened where Cherie's like I'm gonna fast track my religion retroactively. <laughs> um, the moments I know Ian you said that you don't super care about the story stuff but the moments where you get into it and like you have Fen uh, your role playing as Fen and doing like the the friendship building that sort of thing that that arc that kind of he's going on that stuff's been uh, surprising to me since you're all new players but it's been really really satisfying that, that I think that's my answer to that one. It's a good um, good answer good answer. This was a two parter so I'm gonna go to the next part and then after that the next question mm -hmm. and then after that you can ask me a question if if someone wants to. Um, cool. From Kaguya. From Kaguya Queensley, Kaguya Queensley, Kaguya, Kaguya yeah. Queensley. Sorry, uh, on Discord. Um, mm -hmm. What has been everyone's favorite? Yeah, and also heads up, I'm gonna fuck up your Discord names because everyone picks <laughs> stupid ass names. Yeah, why can't uh, people pick shit that people are gonna be able to pronounce? <laughs> Some might be real names. Yes. Yeah. Some might be real names. Knowledge. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Why not? Listen, it, your first initial, last name. Everyone's Discord name. Easy. Good wolf. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Good wolf. Um, from I just from... got that. That's a Doctor Who reference. Holy. You just ah. got that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. From Kugu Queenslay on Discord, Dino. what has been Jesus. everyone's favorite moment in the campaign? I think <laughs> I already answered mine with the surprise stuff. So <laughs> let's just go down the line again. Nate, what has been your favorite moment in the campaign? Jeez, favorite moment. Um, ugh. Um, I thought our, our like mini Tiamat fight was kind of cool um just because it was randomly put into a randomly added dungeon and i just i thought we were gonna die yeah i thought we were i looked at i, it, I was like cameron no was, way cameron was hoping we would die yeah no i just it was a dungeon for like a level two party and you were like level five or six at the time and i was like I yeah gotta throw something he, at you mm -hmm. set level two mm -hmm. yeah but uh Wizards has gone on on record saying like, yeah, our CR shit is bullshit. It's just, yeah. dude, whatever. We have our own internal stuff, which we don't share with you. Shuri, uh, your favorite moment? I think my favorite moment, <laughs> there are two that are like really high up and they're both in the same fight and Xanathar's Guild. When Danny oh, yeah. pushed the fishbowl through. <laughs> yes! Oh, fuck, I forgot about that. Danny's got like all the best ones. Yes, he does. Yeah. That was that, that was, was a really crazy. heroic one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That one was so clutch. And then when I literally picked up Nate in a four speed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That was, yeah, you beach balled me. Yeah. Yeah, that was really good. Oh, I, I want to change good. my I answer a little bit. I, I, that whole me. fight. Yeah. Oh, I, I want to also oh, it's a behind God. it's more of a behind the scenes since it got kind of edited out but when uh ali kazaratharix first got introduced he like flew out of a warehouse and you were interviewing that guy and he was like yeah i was walking my dog and i'm like what did he fly away <laughs> fucking that hit ian just right and i fucking floored him yeah and it was so it's funny happened a couple of said, times yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. um yeah. that that was my favorite behind the scenes. There's there's yeah. a line that kind of got cut short, like not like the reaction got cut a short. A couple of close watchers, if you go back and look, you'll find <laughs> two moments probably where something Nate has done has cracked me up for the entire episode. Yeah, <laughs> where I've not been able to realize stop. how fucked I am. Yeah, and I have to like do you process it? It's in, like, usually two a facial expression. Usually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's one in particular I'm thinking about right now where Nate's face uh, was like, oh, oh shit. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and i feel like i was at at least at first the only person who noticed immediately <laughs> was that the was that the gibbering mouther or was that a different i don't remember it was something uh, that he was unprepared for and he was maybe, like... maybe it was the first time you all saw uh when when <laughs> sprocket saw xanather for the first time it maybe? might have been yeah. I know it's something um, I had to do some like quick thinking bullshit, yeah. and I was like, no, I got nothing. Cheryl, you tell us. Right. You go we back gotta, and look at the tape. 
we gotta <sighs> we gotta keep trying moving on moving questions. on danny what's your favorite moment <laughs> we, we've already said it honestly that that role where I stole a whole fish tank is like one of my top favorite D and D moments slash roles mm-hmm. of all time. But okay. that entire encounter, that entire dungeon, start to finish, was just phenomenal. I'm like, I'm a huge fan of D and D's at its best when things are going wrong, and that was that whole dungeon. We we went in with a plan. Some of us got sick immediately, and then we told one of the guys about murder right in front of him, and it just went to shit from there. Yeah. And the ending of us all surviving, you you guys with your epic fight, and me with my hail mary, because like Sprocket would have died. If, it, yeah. if I was found in that room, I would have been destroyed, and no, that would have been my story end, but... Oh, fuck, it went so different. That, um, um, the, the teleportal, I think, has... Both times you've used it, it's been clutch. And both times you've used it, I've set... Like, it, it's designed to be very hard to use and get right the first time, and you have to take multiple turns to hit the check. But I'm pretty sure both times you've used it, you hit the check on the first attempt, which was, yeah, yeah super clutch. Yeah. yeah, Danny. Danny summons twenties. Yeah, will. yeah, as needed. Hannah, what about you? Um, well, laughing about it now, it's my favorite moment. In the moment, it was I fucking hated it, but it was the shit show that was our fight at the Castle Lantern Manor. Like oh, we had a plan. It was a shit we, show. That is the right word for it. We we had a plan. The plan immediately went to shit, and there were just bodies <laughs> everywhere. Wait, everywhere. You, the, is, was this the cath- Castle Lanterns, or was this the Growl Hoons? The, the... I thought it was the Castle Lanterns, because the Growl Hoons came, they they were also there. And no, we were, like, fighting which, the Growl Hoons. Which was, shit show are you talking yeah, about? This there is, were several this, shit shows. This was the Growl Hoon Massacre where you got the Stone of Galore. The, did we come in like a SWAT team, or did we like when you when, when you were going the, after the guy who did the fireball thing? N- no, I thought it was when we were going to like figure out what was up with the the children and if the castle lanterns oh. had oh were when, when devil Ian was, worshippers when, when when Ian was getting evidence on the castle lanterns yeah yeah. yeah 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 and yeah, then we fought a, a table mimic yeah that was the yeah. castle lantern yeah. oh yeah the table mimic was so yeah good. the table mimic and, then, like, and by the time we left by the time we left there were just like it was so many like, a fucking farce so like there were bodies yeah. like literally piled <laughs> mm-hmm. up. Yeah. And he Every, said that we had to like do saving stealth saving mission. checks on the on the staircases because they were just soaked Covered in green. blood. That is mm-hmm. that is a Covered that is a green. trap filled house for sure. God. And they got hit by another faction too, didn't they? Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. That's why I thought yeah. it was the growl. Yeah. No, it wasn't. Was yeah. it the Xanathers? Yeah. I think no. Xanathers hit it too. It was the Xanathers. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> Ian, that was awesome. wow. What was your Bloody favorite? Brow. Can uh, I I'll say this is a little bit of a cop out, but can I give you like a one and a one A? If you can do so, it fast. One A is when I got my sword, my magic sword back. <laughs> yes. One prime was when my sword got broken in the first place. And the reason why that's my favorite, you guys might be surprised by this, is because it justified all my bitching up until that point. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Very fair. It was the only point I think that I had anybody else on my side. Because <laughs> fuck Cameron. Fuck is DMing. <laughs> I was on the right side of history. End of story. Gotcha. Man, going down on the history books. All right. All right. Does anyone have a question for me, or do we want to go to the next one? Why did you break my sword, you asshole? <laughs> uh, I broke your sword because I wanted to demonstrate that magical items weren't invulnerable, and mm-hmm. I thought that... I thought that Nate was going to stop me from doing it, but he spent <laughs> his sentinel ability to turn too early. So oh, this is Nate's yeah. fault? Nate's so, the one so who fucked me? If, if you remember in that tournament arc, I had those bar. I specifically had you all watch, like, you could watch the matches. You got mm-hmm. to see the barbarians fight. They fought the highest level party in the tournament. And the barbarians didn't beat them, but they the, the siege barbarian that can break items broke one of their rubies and it caused a volcano to erupt in the distance and the high level team had to get out of there to go deal with that and that's how they advanced so i thought i had safely foreshadowed that ability and then i in the fight with the barbarians i foreshadowed him charging 
But another barbarian went first and got too close to Nate. And Nate instinctively used his sentinel reaction. So the other guy got a clean shot on you. This yeah. is this is earth shattering, guys. I, I have I have hated Cameron for months and months. <laughs> now I will retcon this and I now I have hated Nate for months and months. Yeah. Which is it's really fair. a comfortable space for me. Yeah. It's very nice. It's right it's, in the it's, 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 it's home. Historically it's home. been his yes. favorite place to be. It's where I belong. I feel comfortable. Yeah. Okay. The next question is a freaking three part of god damn it guys uh jeepers, <laughs> jeepers seekers on discord i'm gonna ban you for a week for this um Done. jeepers Get seekers on discord out. first question who is most similar to their character and who is most different uh ian um, and fen yeah ian is basically playing fen um playing. nate is kind of playing role and like role is not that different from you um <laughs> he cooks more Cherie, I think would I would say is most different from Alu because Alu's a little goth mm-hmm. girl and Cherie's a yeah. bundle of sunshine. Yeah, that's true. She's that's wrathful a very good though. Point. She's got a lot of wrath. Yeah, I that's... do have a lot of wrath. Like yeah. dark I, I just want you have a vengeful I, streak, I, but you wear it on the inside versus true. Alu, which is wearing it on her outside. Part, I generally yeah. agree, but yeah. Part two: What is everyone's favorite NPC? Let's go down the line. Uh, Nate. Oh, God. Um, There's only one acceptable answer here, Nate. Yeah, yeah. I know. It. And I don't want to say that one because I know it's, your, I know it's right. Um, mm-hmm. the, the right answer is Reggie. Um, but, <laughs> my, but my answer is uh, probably Brenda just because, you know, Roland, Roland might have a future there. We'll see. We got we to gotta bring Brenda back soon. Uh Al, or, sorry, I was looking at the thing. Shereen, hashtag, who, hashtag Wenda Brenda. Yeah. Shereen, <laughs> who, who is your favorite yeah. NPC? I think my favorite, and it's not like one. Besides but Reggie. Were Rats might be oh, my the favorite. Were Rats. Cool. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, they're a fun part of the book. Uh, Danny. Uh, I, I like I like Jelzar, but I think feel like we need to see more of him. But I, absolutely, my favorite character is still Featherfoot. The, the, just a gross sewer gesture that cracked jokes as we were trying to sneak through his base was very fun to me. It's a cool yeah. juxtaposition of uh, weird and scary. Just and a little weirdo. Fun. And then I love so that's how he's written in the book. But I enjoyed like that is him on the job. And then when he came to you with his family afterwards, he's like not funny at all he's like very serious <laughs> with his kids i i like that a lot he's um, very stern yeah hannah favorite npc and <laughs> i guess you can say ollie but who would it be it's besides not ollie? oh that'd be too easy so it's a tie between um vincent do we all remember vincent yeah and, which is um, hilarious to me yeah but and uh uh arturo Oh, Arturo's a good one. She likes the bad boys. Although you keep calling him Arturo, his name's just... What is it? Artur. Artur. Yeah, Artur. Artur. Thank you. Artur. Thank you. But in her mind, he's got a rose in his mouth and like uh, some... Yeah. You know, Mademoiselle, my name is yeah. Artur. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's, he's got a mariachi band. He's willing right. to sweep you off your feet, salsa dance style. He's Vega. Yeah, Ian, exactly. Ian, what yeah. about He's you? Vega. Yeah. He's my Vega. favorite is Brenda, by far. Brenda. And the reason yeah. is because it makes Nate so yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah, because yeah, he does play not have any fun. interest. He does not want Brenda, but he doesn't want to, like, tell her to get the fuck off. Like, yeah. go away. Yeah. Because he's too nice. That's my favorite. Whenever she comes on screen, <laughs> I'm super happy. <laughs> I. I think, um, well, I guess if I had to pick, my favorite would be Wilhelm now that he's an NPC. Um, yeah, that's great. Okay. Part three. Has anyone's player character gone in a different direction than they originally intended with their arc in mind? Um, fe- okay, well, Ian, yeah. yeah. What, what direction did he's you got think that was going to go? I expect it to be way more fucking powerful <laughs> and effective and useful and viable I will say my past without trace has made a big difference. I have become yeah. useful in that sense. So I think that was mm-hmm. a good move. Apart from that, I thought my character was going to be more fun, more dynamic, more useful. I think the problem is the context and the setting. He has not been particularly Yeah. If effective. I ever do if I ever do Rhyme of the Frost made it again for this group, that is the time for Fen. That is like yeah. wilderness survival hunting yeah. monsters time. So uh, no fault of anybody just 
that's the nature of the beast. Yeah, so. yeah. Anyone else? Uh, um, uh, yeah, I I thought Roland and Fen were gonna hate each other. Uh, for well, at least Roland was gonna hate Fen a lot more due to the backstory. But when Fen died, I think uh, that was a moment for me to say, Roland is finally took stock of who he has left, and that's really all he has left. So I think he's changed. He's come around and become way more protective. He's always been a great source of pity and sadness. That's great. I appreciate that. Take pity on the boy. No, he's just you're like you're the only thing he's got left. It's uh, yeah. Okay. You're you're at least, basically. I wouldn't call family. it pity. Yeah. It's it's what our love story. Baby. This whole campaign is our love story. Yeah, I yeah. I think from my perspective, um, <laughs> Anna, how's it going? Come on, <laughs> it's good. Uh, I I think from from my perspective, um, like so so right. I joined the I joined the campaign as the DM like after chapter one. So I didn't get all the information that you all talked with Max about your characters. So I was basically, after I got your impressions of playing with your characters for a while, I was trying to like come up with like narrative interesting hooks and things for your characters. Um, I think from my impression of Cherie's character, Alu, in chapter one, I really thought she was like loner goth girl rogue, but I've been really enjoying what I've been able to build with her in regards to Aodon. I thought like, and that all happened because... Uh, you went you she like died. died yeah you died and i was like i don't want to kill alu and i know like in the in the player's manual they talk about asimar characters have guardian spirits but they give no mechanics for it and i was like i should give mechanics like i can give mechanics for that and that's where aodon came from and that's been that's been a lot of fun yeah i do i agree i think that like Alu's character changed a lot from what I initially envisioned her to be as like, I think that like a lot of the the thoughts I had initially allowed us to get to this place um, where like the whole time I was like, yeah, she's an ASMR, but she's like a necrotic ASMR. So she's got yeah. like this darkness, but there wasn't like a def definitive thing that like, this is what the darkness is. And yeah. then we built a lot of that as the story went on. So yeah, she's Aodon is like hugely is different, darkness. and I'm like hard leaning into that. <laughs> yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun. Um, from OK Put three six seven zero on Reddit, do you not talk in character? Is the DM telling you what you are doing, railroading you to the next encounter? What the? Uh, I, I guess did you read these questions a, before a, you say them out loud screening. did you proofread them ahead of time no I'm, I'm well it's my I feel like it's my I, responsibility to take them as submitted but I feel like gonna, that's a trollish question we're gonna and I think I'm gonna interpret this like okay this is a show how much of this is pre-scripted like beforehand mm. not oh we can talk to each other it's yeah like I haven't seen the, these faces in like a month yeah. so like no. no, none of this is scripted. Like the I only thing to... that ever, like conversations we ever have outside of what mm -hmm. actually gets recorded, um, are things that like, like I might take to Cameron, like separately to be like, I have thoughts about this. I'd like to like, yeah, how can we make that? So, and then he will come up with a way to like help I us can, get to that point. I can hundred percent verify this because as someone who would probably permit more table talk. I there has been virtually none. Every all the table talk has been on camera. You have on seen camera. it. Yeah. Like we have not done anything. And that's the that's not a rule that I have. We we in fact yeah. we have a we have a Discord channel to allow you all to like yeah. plan between Which sessions. We just don't like each other enough advantage. to talk to each other if, unless <laughs> right. we have to. Like, but I, yeah, I yeah. prefer to allow it to go organically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I think I, that might just be our group's play style. I am not a good enough writer to have come up with the shit that has happened. Like Hannah, like she she always liked dragons in in real life, but her character to essentially like she's super smart, but she essentially ignores all the rules that the world knows about dragons to be like yeah. I yeah. want to take this blue dragon whirling into my home. It's uh -huh. not something I would have and then with. And then Nate the player is like, it's an apex predator, <laughs> hyper-intelligent sociopath. Yeah. It's a giant, 
lightning breathing cat. Ollie Don't Kessler, do it. Ollie Can I change my answer, by the way, to the previous question about what was the greatest moment? Because it was every moment that Hannah's decisions pissed off Nate. That's yeah. all of my favorite moments. <laughs> yeah. All of my favorite moments. Those yeah. are all the right. Um, does anyone have another question for me, or do we want to go to the next one? Um, no, we don't care about you. All right. No, um, yeah, I think we should. Nate might next, have one. I have question. a question for you. Okay, okay. go ahead. Where is Never Ember's treasure located, you <laughs> no. bastard? Yeah. Where is it? <laughs> It's a follow up question. Talk. Yeah, yeah. It's follow a up question game. for you, Cameron. Who the hell do you think you are? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where do you get off? How yeah. um, longer is this freaking campaign gonna last? Yeah. Well, th so that's another thing about the scriptedness. Um, I genuinely thought this campaign would last less a time year. than it has, um, specifically because. Well, well I don't want to get distracted. If if another question touches on it, we'll talk about that. Um, yeah. Pluto pill on Reddit. How is your sanity? Um, there are it's moments gone. when I question it. Praying. <laughs> it's like been a gone number? Long. It's it's been gone. Gone. Do you want like a number? Because I got yeah. one. Mine's sure. gone. It's, it's, it's gone for a, a while. Are yeah. negative numbers allowed? Yes. 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 Theoretical numbers. Theoretical numbers. Do they yeah. have to be realistic integers? Negative three I. I. Yeah. yeah, probably that. Um, to the honestly, square root of... Yeah, the the moment when I was... So we all know that I'm stubborn and that yep. I oh. did not allow this campaign a noble death in, yep. in the, the, the right. The typical D and D life span uh, campaign of any TTRPG is you start off, your players are super excited. You play some adventures, you have fun, you get into schedule conflicts and it slowly mm -hmm. just fades into obscurity. Um, I refuse to allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. I, when our DM wasn't going to DM anymore, I took over and I essentially took the campaign as written, and I wrestled it into a more organic format, which is part of the reason it's longer than it normally would have been. Um, the the moments, that transition period, there were a couple moments when I was like, should I just pack it in? Uh, but I'm kind of glad I didn't. Let me tell you, side note of how stubborn Cameron truly is, in our early years of dating, when he was doing some godforsaken D and D session in person, it had, was a fucking blizzard outside. There was snow. We were warned, "Don't go out unless you absolutely have to." Cameron fucking bundles up, is practicing on giving himself, you know, a heart attack as he's shoveling his driveway. And the whole time he's shoveling, he's getting angrier and angrier. And I quote, I quote, one of the things he said was. I will not let Mother Nature stop me from playing D and D. Fuck Mother Nature. <laughs> fuck her. Yeah. Get uh, fucked. Is this uh, uh, is this college? What is it? What, what, no, what is no well, this, it might have this... been. It might have been. Yeah. We were in college. It was yeah. our early years of dating, so it would have been like 2009, 2010. Yeah. Uh, Ian, what were you gonna say? I know you had a hand raised. Yeah, like a good so boy. far, far be it from me for, to like compliment Cameron at any point in life. Um, mm -hmm, but I, mm -hmm. I'll just say, to that point that Cameron's making, I personally very much appreciate his ability to do that, his willingness to take over the campaign. I think this is a good place to say, Cameron. I think ultimately has been actually a really excellent DM. I have appreciated it as a rookie. He's been very patient oh. with me myself. Also, I will also say his willingness to push forward with a campaign that I think has been troubled over the last three or so years. I don't think a lot of people would have had the willingness to do that. And for, especially with three rookies on board, making the experience viable and useful for people who haven't done this before, I wouldn't consider coming back if it hadn't been for Cameron. So thank you very much. And I think a plus rating from me who, by the way, has, nothing but shit to say about Cameron for the last yeah. many months and years. Well, that, over now this you campaign. know it's Nate the whole time. Yeah. On the record, <laughs> fuck Nate. Fuck Nate, he's the worst ever. Yeah. Go Cameron, we're plus Cameron. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. There we go. From, from underscore H8 underscore underscore on Reddit, how many more years do you estimate until you wrap? I Five. thought I thought we were going to wrap this year, but with the hiati and hiatuses and stuff we've been taking... Hiatin? Yeah. I think I think end of 2024 assuming that our pace stays about the same where we we play for maybe a period of 2 months and then we take 2 months break and play for 2 months and take 2 months break it feels like maybe a, a end of 2024. 
Guys, we just need to take sabbaticals from our jobs and just pound this out. I think 80, 80, we're on episode 67, um, less than 100 episodes total, less than 100 episodes, which is 54 hour sessions, which is one year if you're playing weekly. So like still not like crazy long. We've just taken all these breaks in between. Um, so sorry, just yeah. I don't want to interrupt, but is that for someone who doesn't know? Is that normal? Is that mid range? Is that like like? Oh uh, yeah, Danny that? and Nate, what would you think? Uh, for what a campaign Are... to go on for three years, four years? I feel like well, our just like not even like the under time, about but three like, years. Like, play, how, like how many how many them. four not... hour sessions? Right. Yeah. Like not oh. the overall time because we take we go slow, but like I mean like yeah. Uh, per session time, I mean, yeah. four is probably three or four hours is probably minimum amount of time I would do to like get progress in a campaign because like the first half hour is just fucking around, um, like in, in terms of getting you know doing stuff in person and probably online as well. But I'd say the standard is probably anywhere between four and six hour sessions. And how many weeks of those? Like how many of those um, sessions? depending on the scope of the of the thing maybe a year yeah well how long did it take us to get through storm king's thunder because that's the that only one took other... like two maybe three years yeah because that's like. the only other campaign i've finished did you play yeah. well Wayne? we did fan Del we did fandelver as well which Hold was a crime you, you finished domains of dread danny yeah so, but there was always yeah <laughs> Yeah, the, the campaign I was there for one session for. It, it was the last one. It counts as a win. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah. I'm putting that one on the board. Two yeah. campaigns for Danny. Yeah. No, we did Fandelver. We did Storm King Thunder. Um, um, Fandelver probably maybe, took like a, a little took a year. slower than normal, but not like outrageously slow. Not outrageously not in, not in the bite-sized chunks we're taking. It's the breaks that make it feel yeah. so much longer. Yeah. For for example, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden had about the same. We played it for two years. We played it every other week for three to four hours. So it's about the same amount of time. Right. Um, just and, spread out. Ours yeah. is spread out more. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. all, right. Um, all right. Uh, from Nakun on Reddit, can you say more about this rat baby? Yes. <laughs> From Cosmic Error I 87. <laughs> no, what, 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 I guess, what would you want me to... Is the party... Do you have a, a Rat Baby related question or anything I, you'd want me to answer? Yeah. Yeah, like, I was curious about, like, as soon as Aodon was introduced, it seemed like Sherry was on board for it immediately. Like, was that something you guys discussed beforehand? Or or you were just like, hey, here's this cool thing. And she's like, all right, I'll take it. We did talk about it beforehand. It started as soon as I took over as DM. I didn't have the Rat Baby in mind, but I knew that I wanted to put mechanics to the Guardian Spirit that ASMR have. Um, and Shree and I went back and forth. Like a lot of it was me asking her questions about her character. Like, Hey, when you made this character with Max, like what was your backstory? And she told me about, uh, her, her like a, she wanted a dark spirit, uh, guilt. And she wanted mm -hmm. to like, it was related to her brother's death. Uh, and Aodon has in fact changed. Originally it was going to be her brother's spirit. It was not Ooh, going to be a God. Um, but I think, I forget what happened. It was when you died and you met the Deva of Torm and the Deva accused you of theft and you got like really indignant about that. Um, and it, it, originally it was this idea that um, your brother's spirit was supposed to go to the afterlife of Torm and that's what you stole. But I think the interpretation as we played through it, and this is again, like it's not scripted, so things change when it goes live. Um, the Something about it convinced me that what in fact had been stolen was Torm's portfolio. If you look at the rat baby's like portfolio as a deity, it is essentially a match of Torm starting out and through Alu's actions, they've slowly been branching away. Um, and I, that Deva is like hunting down her family and is going to kill all of them. There is a counter that the party doesn't know about uh, based on some things that uh, Alu does that eventually the, the Deva will make it to the prime material plane and have to be confronted. Oh, um, God. But, but, I mean, but now I you're, guess, like, you're, like, level nines and you've got... Like, say, at least it's just a stuff. Deva and not a freaking planetar or a yeah. solar. Fuck. Um, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
maybe that answers. And the rat baby, it's definitely been like we went back and forth on some things. I gave, I think the initial like our design of the rat baby, I think was mostly my. I wanted something cute and freaky, uh, so that was like a baby with like three rats for a head. Um, yes. Yeah. Something that's like Great. fucked up and like dark, but in like a toy that Sid from next door on Toy Story would make. Yeah. Um, he kind of reminds me of like Shiva, like a blue god with many arms. I, that, I take many... that as the highest god compliment death. that it feels like a real deity that someone would like. It, it has the sort of um, uh, trappings that you'd associate with an actual like something that people mm. worshipped at one point. Because, yeah, all the old gods were weird fucking things. It, cro it crosses, like, Indian, Hindu into, like, Chinese Zodiac for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, next question from Cosmic Error 87 on Reddit. This one's for the players, not for me. Um, and I guess this one can go out to everyone because everyone has played in at least one campaign before. How are you liking this adventure compared to the others you've played? Uh, no hard feelings. If you, you know, be as brutally honest as you need to be. Uh, Nate, you can start. Hey. Uh, let's see. That I've played in or because I because I got a soft spot for my Avernus campaign. This but specifically says play. It says play. Okay. Um, let's see. Is this? Um, I do. I do still like our the uh, our in person campaign that we had back in Cincinnati, Danny. Um, just because Storm I King's love, Thunder. yeah, Storm King's Thunder and Fandelver. Just because mm -hmm. it was it was cool to do it in person and just to hang out with your buds. And it's like, especially now, I don't get to do that very often anymore. No. Um, so I think with that, like, not that it was any you know it wasn't a superior dming technique or anything it's just that i liked in, i like in-person stuff when i can but it was a with real the, good group too yeah yeah with the with the panorama and the uh and the moving it didn't says uh, the guy who moved away four <laughs> billion miles fuck this guy sure <laughs> what about you i know you had uh you all like your other campaign experience was something nate ran and I remember you wanted to come back to yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Who's a better DM, me or Cameron? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can yeah, answer that not... definitively. I am because I DM and you don't. Yes. <laughs> that is, uh, sure. Touch I think love the map. I would. What I would say is that definitely initially, um, I think. So what? So what I think, I really think is <laughs> that. I don't think it's that this campaign is better or worse than any other campaign. I think um, what's really important about D and D and playing D and D just generally is understanding what style of game you're playing before you build your character. And there was so, a major mismatch at the beginning of this one. Yeah. yeah. So when we started playing, um, and no hate to Max at all, but we were not prepared for what he envisioned. And so our characters were built based off of preconceptions that we had from playing with Nate and his campaign, not realizing how very different they would be. Mm -hmm. um, and so initially, I think I was hating it because I was yeah. like, what the hell is happening? And didn't have any other experience to compare it to. Yeah. Um, but I think that once you took over and we kind of like, it took us a while to transition kind of away. Like it takes time to tell the story into a new direction. Mm -hmm. um, but once we did that, I think that this has been a lot better. I think that I got more familiar and comfortable with my character and the world that we're, you know, living in, building together. And it has been really good. I do still want to know what the fuck is happening into the homebrew game that we were playing because I was like so invested in Baron Win and I uh -huh. miss her. Okay. <laughs> like, just write the story. If, like, if you guys want, play, I like, can like, give you an outline was, of what cheating. I was going to do. Yeah. Just, yeah. I yeah, mean, just, I was helping her cheat, unfortunately. Like, I didn't know. Like, we, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, if you guys want, I can give you a rundown of like what all would have happened if we would have continued that more. If you were interested in knowing. I am interested. Okay. I, like, I want the novel, Nate. <laughs> want the novel? 
want the novel. Danny, what about you? Six seasons in a movie. All right. I'll, I'll preface this by saying I do like Cameron's a DM. I respect his style. I'm not a huge fan of this campaign. Just in like just just in the, in what's required of it. I'm not good at intrigue. I'm not good at putting pieces together. I'm terrible in R- all RPGs with names. Uh, the first RPG I ever played was Morrowind, so I gave up on trying to remember any name ever in a game. Uh, I'm much more of like I like Storm Kings. I like Avernus. I like the very active problem solving of hey, here's a fucked up thing. Go solve it with your character. And like I like kind of like the uh, uh, running around and adventure stuff. Like I, I I love this group. I love playing with you guys. It's just not. A campaign I'm particularly good at. Yeah, from from my perspective, running this compared to other campaigns I'm running, again, this is the only, and this I think is a pretty unique situation of having a transition in your dungeon master, like partway through the campaign. The, having inherited this campaign, uh, it taught me a ton about how important session zero stuff is. So like mm-hmm. Danny, Nate, and I, we're, we're not now, but sometime in August, we're starting something new. And, like, we spent an hour today with the group of, like, hey, this is the type of adventure it's going to be. This is, like, what the world is. This is, like, the stuff that you're, like, all the things that annoyed us about inheriting Waterdeep without the information that we needed at the beginning. I'm, I've, I've, hopefully I've taken forward in my other campaigns and I've been, like, I'm going to make sure from the beginning everyone knows what to expect. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. Hannah. What about you? You've actually been playing some other D and D alongside. How's this compared to Dragon mm-hmm. of Ice Spire Peak? Uh, how do you compare your two DMs? Well, it's the same DM. Yeah. But which one do so, you like better? Oh. Which one do you like better? So I. Which one would you go? Uh, the other one has like a great head of hair. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I, think... <laughs> I, I put a blonde it. wig on. Yeah, it's so incredible. I, I think I am partial. I am partial to to. Water deep, just because I'm not that I'm not enjoying Dragon's Vice by Peak, I am, but I think because I am already friends with everyone in in the Water Deep campaign, I like I already have making a lot of assumptions uh, about our relationship, Hannah. Well, familiarity she did, or whatnot, yeah, you know what I mean? Totally whereas, like, you, you did give me the feedback like, that with, Dragon Vice by Peak, you're like, Dragon's there are way Peak, too many women in here. That's not what I said. Shut <laughs> up, Cameron. <laughs> That's not what I said at all. I am very much enjoying it playing a girls only campaign. I just because I really don't we don't really know each other. It's also it's doing the campaign and also learning about each other. Mm -hmm. So the familiarity isn't there. I can't like shit talk anyone. Mm hmm. You need to have a dragon of icebreaker peak before you, you know, move on. and I can't, <laughs> I can't blow anyone's head off in the other one and laugh about it like I can in this one. Yeah, like, yeah, it's the and glass. Glass. And fellowship, laugh. the fellowship of the traveling pants. I got gotcha. you, mm. uh, Ian. What about you? Okay, so I don't, obviously don't have a lot of this to compare to. I really have Nate's campaign. I will say, Cameron DM. I've already talked. I've already like talked about how great, how great I think you've been. You've been great. Copy and paste caveats. everything. Everything that Danny said is true for me. Obviously, I think everybody knows. I like dice rolling. The more dice rolling, the happier I am. Obviously, not really a lot of that. Especially not to say, if nothing else. My character is not great. That's okay. Um, uh, I. Generally, I've liked it better since I got my magic sword back. Not no surprise to everybody. <laughs> so, um, I've had a good time. Um, you know, uh, to Anna's point, all the people on here are awesome. So I enjoy dialing here. So um, this is probably it's the longest running. It's the best campaign. Honestly, the only thing that I miss from this campaign, from anything else I've ever done, and for anybody else who's familiar with the channel, will know, I miss Tom. Yeah, I, I definitely when we if we end this campaign, we, love you, when we finish this campaign, what whatever we end up deciding next, there's like a larger pool of people I want to pull in, see who's available. And I, the target would be if I was doing another show, another D&D show shorter, for sure, like shorter try and sure. do like a 20 episode, a, a very short campaign. I'm actually getting some off camera practice with that. Uh, so. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll be prepped for it. All right. Creature reference. I want Tom and I want Gorblin. So want... Yes, yeah, Gorblins. Gorblins. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, from Gorb- Archimesia on Reddit, are you going to transition <laughs> to Dungeon of the Mad Mage when you're done? Uh, oh. No. Uh, 
Dungeon yeah. of the Mad Mage. I mean, it, I I'd like to play it at some point, but it is essentially the sequel to this campaign. It goes all the way up to level twenty. Uh, Ian, it might be really up your alley because it's nothing but a giant dungeon. Um, but I think when we're done, when we when we do our like our ending and our epilogue on Max's Mad Mythic Mercenaries, we are done at that point, and we can put it on the shelf. And if we want to come back to it at some point in the future after a long break for Dungeon of the Mad Mage, we could. But I don't want to immediately start with the same characters in Waterdeep doing something. I think we yeah. all would like a break at that a break. point. Yeah, yeah, at least different characters for a, a bit. A chance to start something new. Yeah, something different. Um, and we might not even do a recorded campaign immediately afterwards. We might just play something off screen. You know, who knows? Well, a palate the, cleanser. The answer to that is uh, we will not transition immediately to Dungeon of the Mad Mage, but um, at some point I would like to play it because I know Danny loves uh, <laughs> Alistair Black Cloak, and I would love yeah. to see Sprocket's uh, Sprocket's interactions with Halister in the future. Yeah, um, yeah, that's the it. unofficially Sprocket might go to the Dungeon of the Mad Mage just to try to find his idol again. Yeah, this one is targeted to the players. Um, and th I think this could be a collective question uh, for the from Sunglass Gnome on Reddit. For the players, it seems like you use violence a lot. In our Waterdeep campaign, we did more negotiation. Is that a conscious decision, or are you all just murder hobos <laughs> at heart? Uh, oh, oh, some people oh, use violence. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Because I've also mentioned this to Cameron. Is I've I there are moments where like I've vented frustration. To Cameron behind the scenes of like I don't understand why we fucking go in guns blazing all the time with certain things I feel like a lot of it could be through proper conversation techniques so I it's not intentional I think it's just like I don't know the well, way so, everyone's brain is yeah, wired can I can I comment on this so I it's funny that you say that Anna because I totally agree that and I will cop to this that it's largely my fault um, because as see Ibid see above I like rolling dice so like I always like wanna get in fights um, I think it's very funny that at least from my interpretation that in, within the context of the story Hannah's character Holly Rees and Fen are actually the ones that have like got a cool like vibe going. Like we're like cool with each other, strangely, even yeah. though like she's like the more like oh I would narrative never character. It, and I'm more yeah, than Holly Reeves. Like after this campaign is over, like Holly Reeves will only make eye contact with you. She'll probably yeah. never speak another word right, to you in public. Right, because we're like public. socially correct. Banned. You're a social pariah. Right, of course. Yeah. The uptown upscale girl versus the yeah the yeah. athlete hick hillbilly yeah so and, 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 i will i will take responsibility for a lot of this oh, I like rolling dice you guys are breakfast so, clubbing again, i do think it goes, it's I, I think it's ironic that like of all got, people like, it goes yeah, back to gets it's, along it goes back to expectations yeah. where the original dm never told the starting party hey this is going to be a campaign about intrigue and influence uh because i think if he had then one, we would have done different characters, maybe. Wilhelm would probably have stuck around because he was, like, perfect for that. Um, mm -hmm. But two, we could have been like, hey, maybe we should play a different campaign. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it, it just goes back to mismatched expectations at the beginning. The reason this party is, like, tends to go guns blazing <laughs> is because their characters were built to do that. They're really good, like, uh, they're generally really good at that. They're... We don't ben have has no other skills. We don't have a high charisma character in the party. Zero. Wilhelm was that guy. Uh, yeah, I can't believe Holly Rees does. Yeah, Holly Rees is the one who can do it. Who, by the way, strangely enough, to is be also fair, the best at combat. Usually, we all, <laughs> it's true. But to be fair, we do give Holly okay. opportunities to talk people down, so, typically, yes. unless. <laughs> Unless we're in a position where you have to like make like you were already rolled initiative and you have to do something and then and you're the first person. So like if Roland or I are the first person in the initiative order, we're like, well, fuck, I guess we're attacking. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, the other thing that Roland, I think, is kind of hung up on is like he's all for talking. But when there have been people that have been stabbed, there's blood on the floor 
and then negotiations want to strike up. I'm like, no, that's that's we're too yeah. far in now. Yeah, We've lost the battle already. Yeah, I think it's because like Roland, remember when you killed an innocent person? <laughs> I do. That's true. You mean uh, a criminal? Well, you do you mean a criminal doing a crime? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember that. Bro, you're, so, such a, you're such a cop. Yeah, Nate, here, Nate's, Nate's a Blue Lives Matter kind of guy. <laughs> oh, I guess. God. God. <laughs> Fucking narc. Oh, my God. <laughs> Get out of here. Uh, okay. If you would have just complied. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. From, from Corey Doris 22 on Reddit, I know it's still a ways off, but do you have any plans for continuing the story after you complete the written module? Or is it going to be the end of this story and starting a new one? Uh, from my perspective, end of this story, starting a new one. Maybe we, like I said, maybe we come back to Dungeon of the Mad, yeah. Mad Mage in the future. But I have or... other ideas for stuff. Like, so mm -hmm. if if I was going to DM the next campaign we record, uh, I have this idea of a seafaring campaign where the journey, everyone is uh, the crew of a ship that's sailing from one coast across the ocean. And you get to do like island hopping adventures and fight sea monsters and that sort of stuff. Um, I, um, I have had this idea of, uh, like Rhyme of the Frostmaid and I really liked, and I really enjoyed running it. Um, I'd like to run it again at some point. Um, but I've had this idea of running, um, Lost Minds of Fandelver on the channel, um, where that would be a short campaign. It's only level one through five, and that would be an opportunity to use Tailspire. And I really like Tailspire yeah. as, as a map system. Um, so, so if, for, if I'm DMing, I'd do something different. And I think no one else who ch would choose to DM like Nate, Danny, maybe Tom, none of them would want to pick up this crew and campaign. You'd want to do something else if yeah. you were choosing to DM. At most, I would probably want to plug Roland in to another campaign somewhere, but like just little just like because gods I could, yeah, and stuff. Yeah. yeah, like hinting that like cuz Danny might come back and like if he do if you do the mad mage he might have Sprocket just yeah. because Sprocket had a invested interest in the story. But Roland um, would probably be retired. Roland might be retired uh or like I have a character who's uh I have another PC character I've been wanting to play who is an old retired veteran fighter who physically cannot keep up anymore so he decided to become a wizard instead. Hmm. Um, so I'm like, what if that's rolling in the future? Like, I don't know. I dig it. So, yeah. Yeah. There's ideas out there. I know Tom at one point was going to try and do Strixhaven, which is essentially Harry Potter. School, Harry Potter, but in the D and D universe. Um, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I think we have so many other ideas that we want to do that for Waterdeep, it's unlikely that this would continue, especially not immediately. And um, Fen has suffered enough. Yeah. <laughs> From Nullus72 on Reddit, how do the players feel about the Castle Lanterns? How about the other factions? Yeah, I am I am waiting for the Castle Lanterns kids' jaws to, like, unhinge and prove that they are already monsters. Yeah. Like, that's what I'm waiting for. I kind of feel like that would be cool. Like, what, what about... Yeah, let's go through the, the factions. So Castle Lanterns... Um, you're all still kind of working with them. You're working against them, but um, yeah. you haven't like openly declared war on them. Or uh, what we're, I think what we're trying to distinguish is their actual truthful intentions. Like they want, they, I don't doubt that they want to get their kids out of that deal. Um, like, in, in, otherwise, why, why bother ask, asking at all? But is it something that they truly like got tricked and stumbled into doing, or did they just think? Yeah, no, we'll figure it out. Let, here, take. I'll gamble this, but I know I'm not. It's not a gamble since I know I'm yeah. going to win. What about? Um, so we'll we'll do the four major factions, and we won't talk like yeah. we don't need to talk about Force Gray or the Silver Gauntlets or the Harpers or anything. But what about the Zentarum? So Alu, you um, you haven't talked with them in a while, but like you got in pretty close with the Doom Raiders and Devil Star Songs crew. And some of them converted yeah. to Aodon. What are what are your thoughts on them? Yeah, I mean, Alu's like all about having friends in low places, as long as they're like, you know, she's got lines. Decent low she, places. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that reminds me while we're talking about them, she she still needs to touch base on that lawyer because Davil got arrested. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's and, been time travel stuff happening, so it, not a ton of time has passed, 
but yeah, that'll be, see, this is a good opportunity to make that note next time we play, uh, we can visit Davil in jail and see how he's holding up. Yep. Got to make sure he's gonna be okay. What about the, I mean, the Xanathar's Guild, they're not like totally out of the grand game, but you've, you've, uh, fucked them up pretty good. Although you do have Silgar and Silgar's bowl. Silgar is, is a oh. fucking time bomb. <laughs> <laughs> well, we went, we went back in time, so we're gonna get him back. It's gonna be fine. Yeah. All of our friends will be murdered. I don't remember murder. Silgar. He's the goldfish. That's, he's he's, the, yeah, he's the goldfish, that... goldfish. His favorite possession in the whole world. Yeah, and on the cover of one of the books. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That fish uh, is more than like any him. any Xanathar guild member ever. That I stole him. One. That I, I feel think... like we should send him downstairs to live with yeah. uh, Ollie. What would you do if somebody stole Ollie, Hannah? Um, I'd become I'd the applause. female version of John Wick. Yeah. Exactly. That's um, what we did. We stole Ollie from yeah. from, from, yeah. from yeah. Xanathar. Yeah, it's not yeah. it's not good. Um, and he's what, already <laughs> ten times better than John the, Wick. the fourth faction that I think this group and every campaign that plays Waterdeep is a little different, but for this group, I feel like kind of people have thought the least about is Bregan Dareth, which Oh, Fen yeah. actually has contacts with. Um, you have you have both fought with them and worked with them. Uh, you haven't really done a deep dive into what their motivations or connections or anything is. Uh, does anyone have any theories or thoughts there? I think I'm mostly just like, what the fuck is up with these guys? I don't actually know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. What are they? I don't know. What are they like? Um, Where are they getting these guns? Chaotic good. Maybe like you know what I mean? Like they're Han Solo style, like they're like sort of gray, but Yeah. The... Yeah, that's that's pretty close. There is a hundred percent a Han Solo character that Sprocket got to meet. That cool drow with the hat and the rapier yeah. and the dagger gauntlets, that one V one Xanather. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That one that one you'll you'll I'm sure you'll get to meet eventually in the in the future. He's he's oh, a little to play. Yeah. This this wasn't a faction, but wasn't there another character that Holly Reese had a crush on, a female one, who was like also a really cool fighter? That's a oh, list, man. Uh, the vigilante, uh, the, the black vigilante. viper, the black viper. Yeah, the yeah. black viper. Yeah. yeah. I, Are we Holly, running into thought, them again? I thought Alu had a. I thought Alu and her had more chemistry than Holly. Well. No, uh, I was me. Not the sparrow. <laughs> The no the black the thief the one that worked with you in the Castle Lantern Villa, she's um, like the purple sparrow the falcon or what did you call her? She the black viper. viper. She, viper. she has a purple cloak, viper but she's bird. called the black viper. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You could absolutely meet her again. Um, <laughs> did, did we get her? Did we get a picture of her posing with the treasure that we have to steal? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's 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 <laughs> yeah. the. That's the biggest the reason. Boss she, move. Yeah, she she she's there for the infamy, and you all didn't want it to be known that you were there. So she basically like is your cover. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, it worked out for, you. for all of us. Yeah. Um. Awesome. Okay. Next from Cipher underscore four two seven on Reddit, you have added homebrew content to the adventure. What has been your favorite side stuff to run as a DM or play as a player? What homebrew Ooh. rules would you add to the campaign? Um, I'm going to answer first real quick and then we'll go around the table. Um, homebrew rules. I haven't done it because I didn't want to change stuff in the middle of the campaign, but I don't like that flanking gives advantage. Uh, in all my other campaigns, I've really gotten used to and gotten uh, the homebrew version of flanking, which is that it gives plus two to your attacks. And that way other methods of gaining advantage still apply since advantage doesn't stack. Um, what other homebrew stuff? Uh, I would give, I definitely, I have a feat that... Um, modifies the path of the berserker barbarian so they they recover exhaustion on short rests i think that makes that class viable um i have been slowly getting more confidence in adding homebrew stuff to this campaign so for example fen's um hunter's mark it functions the exact same way but it's just no longer a spell which means that uh fen doesn't have to maintain concentration to use it for its duration and he can cast it even if he's unable to cast spells and it can't be countered spelled. It's to me, it's ridiculous that like a ranger core feature is something that can be counter spellable, but whatever. Um, yeah, that's homebrew stuff. Homebrew content. My favorite thing that I added to the campaign, I think it's Artor. Artor is not in the book as written. 
Um, I took him from, uh, I reinterpreted him from other adventures that take place in Waterdeep. Um, but I think he's been a hit with a party and he was not in the original adventure, but he's a lot of fun. Yeah. And he's you're not pretty... at all jealous of Artur. I'm amazed by this. Nah. Well, I mean, I am Artur, so, you know. I see. Uh, you wish. Nate, uh, yeah. what is, what was been your favorite side stuff to play as a player? Homebrew. I'm looking at, I'm looking at Artur art and he's fucking Idris Elba vampire. Yeah. Fucking That's a. why Polly Reef has a crush on him. Yeah, fair enough. Um, Fen might have a crush on him. Artur, <sighs> Artur harkens back do. to the days when there were so few character creation options in video games. I had to create black characters because that was the closest thing to my skin tone. That's... Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's really bad. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's a true um, metric that people will judge. That's, a like, that's like the creator. Mass Effect effect. Is yeah. What it is. Uh, but yeah, Nate, favorite, favorite bit of home um, slash side content. I, I, I mean, I, I'm a power gamer at heart. I will I will RP, but I power game all day, every day. Um, so I've been really liking the additional feats you've been letting us do, but I do like that they are contextual. Yes. Um, like, it, it forces us to do downtime and, like, think about how we would go about getting those things, those those feats and expertises. Um, so, yeah, that's been, that's been my favorite thing to do because it just pulls away from the here and now and also makes you think about the future. Cherie, what about you? Favorite homebrew thing? I feel thing? like it's not going to come as a surprise that, like, doubling down on <laughs> Aodon Rat Baby has probably been my favorite. I like that um, my character is really committed to her little were rats and sparrows and, like, the stealthy, sneaky network of spies that she has around the city. That's all, like, I really enjoy that. I dig it. Danny, what about you? I mean, the, the teleportal is kind of a homebrew magic item, but there's been other stuff, too. Yeah, the teleportal has been a, a clutch in a couple of cases, but, like, I've really enjoyed armoring up the the tavern, uh, Troll oh, Skull, yeah, and just, like, yeah. upping the defenses of it. Because, like, artificers are really cool, but, like, once you get your artificer set, there's not a ton you can do. So it's nice to be able to say, like, hey, there's some other crazy things I can make up. So... Speaking of which, we need to, at some point, we need to talk about downtime for the things that you might have learned from Halister in terms of traps and things like that. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, yeah we'll have <laughs> I already have ideas. Yeah. I already have ideas to implement them. Hannah, what about you? What about uh, your favorite side stuff? I guess in terms of what side stuff is, the treasure map stuff that led to Artor was side stuff. Yeah. The lighthouse was side stuff. Lighthouse the, is fun. Um, Blue Alley was side stuff. The time travel arc has been side stuff. The tournament Ollie, arc has been side Ollie stuff. Ollie is hard side stuff. Yeah. I um I really enjoyed um I and still am enjoying the things that we did with our tour. Um mainly because I loved it when we first met him and uh everyone was like getting ready to go guns blazing yet again and was really nervous. And I was like, no, let me talk to him. Yeah, that so would have like, been a TPK if you had fought. Yeah, exactly. Them. And you just like, yeah, that I think that there is for a, for a loop in the in a fun way. Um, and also the tournament because I Holly Reeves so badly wanted to prove herself and be tough, and she got the the little helmet that you gave her to oh, the crown of affliction yeah. yeah to intimidate other people and the whole time i was just like thinking back to the movie little giants when they like do the, the oh the, the toothpaste pills. thing yeah yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, i was like rabies. that's what she's trying to do yeah yeah that's funny fen uh ian what about you so i don't have a lot of context for this so it's sometimes difficult to me for me to make a distinction between the two but for me it's generally any time Cameron basically lets the baby have his bottle and gives me some <laughs> some. I get yeah, your magic lateral, sword is some, a homebrew item. Yeah, your magic right, sword is a homebrew item. Yeah. Right, exactly. So anytime he's like, okay, let Ian have some fun because otherwise he's. Uh, that's the first thing, and then, um, I don't know, uh, yeah. Apart from that, it's 
whenever Cameron is nice to me, because this generally doesn't happen very often, and yeah. it's usually homebrewed stuff. The, yeah, I the, like, the, I the like rules your as little, written um, were not yeah. nice to Ian. Well, that's it. I, so basically, whenever Cameron corrects for Hasbro's bad decision for making Rangers garbage. Yeah. No, I was going to say, um, I liked, I think it was homebrew when you had your little uh, dream yeah, escapade. The, the, yes. Mm -hmm. that, that was, was cool. kind of, that was really Because cool. that was like a character building moment, too. Yeah. Which I yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, as you previously stated in, a, in another answer, uh, you like when he puts me on the spot. Yes, yeah, I like true. anything that makes that makes Nate make this face. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's uh, my favorite. That leads that. perfectly into the next question from Shanice Emery on Twitter. What has, what has been the favorite monster the party has fought? And I I think it's this. You know, we're gonna say single monster, not an encounter. So baby Tiamat doesn't count because that was technically five monsters. Mm -hmm. uh, but Nate, favorite monster you fought? Favorite monster we fought. Um, oh God, I think uh, the the werewolf was kind of cool. But the I, one that bit I, you or Brand Stonebridge? Uh, Brand Stonebridge. I like that. Yeah. Like I'm I'm kind of interested in that storyline, but I just think like that like finding him in the house and. Yeah, storyline, like, I love, because, again, starting of the campaign, you and Ian had this idea for your character backgrounds. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think Max ever had any intention of, like, tying it together into the campaign. I took it to, like, tie it together. Um, so, Bran Stonebridge, out of character, I think we've talked about this, but he is what is called a loop Garou. Loop Garou, yeah. Um, it's a he, ubermensch he, werewolf. Yeah, it's it's a, a what what is my favorite tier two mini boss monster if you mm -hmm. need a, a henchman that will help your boss your big bad evil guy and will survive encounters uh, and be a threat to the party in terms of the damage he deals you get a loop garrow and you give him uh the cutting actions from a rogue and he'll have the ability to escape fights and survive to fight another day he'll do enough damage to threaten people his version of lycanthropy is even stronger um and yeah he can murder your families or your loved ones and and they'll mm -hmm. have instant reason to hate his guts. Yeah. So on general principle of coolness, that one, and then just haha -ha, funny time, uh, the table mimic was probably one of my favorites <laughs> as well. Yeah. I, was I was just like, God damn it. Sheree, what about you? Favorite monster you fought? I think I really enjoyed, I've forgotten what they're called, but in the lighthouse tower, all the water. Oh, the eel folk. The eel folk oh. and like the, that whole um just like that whole skirmish was fun and like with the wall water elemental and all this stuff mm -hmm. that yeah down. Mm -hmm. that was fun that was a good one uh danny what about you yeah i was actually gonna go with the eel folk too um just because like i had lightning uh, launcher at the time i couldn't do any day i just powered them up by damaging <laughs> them but yeah. immediately i had no attacks so i just had to like improvise entirely which is very fun for me uh, shout out once again that uh, that was uh, not homebrew but it was a side adventure I, I took all the side adventures and they tie into the main campaign through reasons the party doesn't know yet um, but that was written by Kelsey Dion a, a friend of the channel and uh, a very talented adventure author uh, her works are under the arcane library that is her like uh, publishing company and all that she self publishes adventures and she makes fantastic ones. I've run a ton of her adventures now. Shout out, Kelsey. Um, Damn. Yeah, yeah. Real good stuff. Um, and she even made a sequel to that adventure, which I'm not going to run as part of this campaign. But uh, if you ever want more eel folk, just let me know because there's there's more to be had. Um, Hannah, what about you? To Unagi. <laughs> um, Is that a Ross reference? Yeah. <laughs> I... I don't know if I have one. If I'm being honest, I feel like they all kind of blended together for me. Can't, she does not give a shit about combat and enemies, no. man. Well, remember the very I, last session oh, we did, she I have snapped one for her you. finger and she killed like 20 people. I was going to yeah, say the that tree was pretty fight. Fucking the awesome. tree fight was the one for you, right? Your but father. I, your favorite monster you've killed is your father. Jesus, Cameron. <laughs> I think probably... It wasn't a monster fight, though. But I do think, again, like, just the Castle Lantern fiasco. Because I think after a while, I just kind of knew, like, okay, there's no going back from this. So 
When you Let's talk just about kill. bodies stacking up in a farce, that makes me yeah. think the Growlhoon Vila. That is oh, where, okay. That then is that's where, probably like, it. Like, the floor was just covered in bodies yes. by the end of it. Yeah. 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 Because the, the uh, Zentarum came in, Bregan Dareth came in, yes. Xanathar was exactly. watching. Exactly. You yes. all came in with the Growlhoons. Yes. Yeah, that was Growlhoon Vila. Yeah. Yes, that was it for sure. Uh, yeah. Ian, yeah. what about you? Favorite monster? See? You guys are going to have to help me out with this, but there was a moment where, and this is famous, where Danny summoned a crit out of fucking nowhere, just on demand. <laughs> and that was the, I don't, I forget the context of the fight. I totally forget. I, I do apologize too. For this. But it was, he summoned a crit and like it saved the day. It was perfect timing. And it was the moment that I, my character and I realized. Stick with fucking Sprocket. You will be okay. <laughs> follow yeah. Danny and just do what he does. You'll be all right. And so I that did. was the best moment. For me. Uh, I forget I the did. monster we were fighting. I forgive me, but that I do was too, honestly. Moment. It's I'm... it might have been the Xanathar's dungeon for a while. Yeah, it Isn't might it? have. Yeah, the, that dungeon had a fun, lot of fun monsters. Yeah, not, it was not... like. Least Danny was MVP my, on that one. My yeah. my backup is the tree fight where the all those enemies were around the tree because. That was where like Holly had her Gandalf moment, where it was like, "Oh my mm. fucking god!" It's, it's That's happened. Cool. It's happened twice. It was there, and if you remember the lighthouse fight, where the first room of the lighthouse, like yeah. Cherie didn't want to have anything to do with the fight, so Alu just like went <laughs> right. upstairs. Mm -hmm. But the 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 first room is described as having like that's where they store their kerosene. So well, the, <laughs> the the tree fight was the moment where I was like, oh. That's a different character. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I, that's a different thing. I, I'm, I'm not on this sword. level. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. I can't. I'm out. Of, I'm outclassed by this shit. Like, I need to go to a different lead. Yeah. All right. That's what that uh, is. Next question. Can I say real quick? Shout out yeah. to the shark fight that we got attacked by a shark oh, in the harbor. Oh, that was really yeah. cool. Too. That was a good shark Obl fight. Uh, what was it called? Obliteros. Yeah, Obliteros. <laughs> yeah. He's like he's gonna name. We can't fight this guy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was cool. It's very um, scary. He's got a name. We can't fight this guy. <laughs> from from Timely Masterpiece 69 on Reddit, uh, nice. what would you have done differently if you did this again? Um, mm. I think if you had asked me um, into the weeds of winter 2021, I would have said I would have canceled this campaign and done something different. Um, but now that like we're not there and we moved past it, I'm having a because of what the players it. wanted to do. Like you didn't want to do like the heist style. Like um, I I think I just felt like like I yeah like like you all weren't. It was a mismatch. You you I I could tell that you all were struggling with the expectations and like as a DM, like if your players aren't having a great time finding that motivation to fucking ask everyone to come back next week is hard as hell. Yeah. Um, but somehow I managed to ignore your wishes. <laughs> Cameron, you are not hot enough to make me want to come back every yeah. week. Um, he usually does ignore our wishes. <laughs> yeah. Now, now what I'd say, what would I have done differently? Um, I think I would have maybe cut out some of the side stuff but i don't know like we just talked about how much we enjoyed some of those side stuff um i guess i would have maybe done like a much different session zero reset and really hammered home the like format of the campaign maybe i don't know giving up people opportunities to like just do new characters in the campaign but I i'm not sure but okay we'll go to players nate what would you have done differently if you had the chance um i would have taken roland in a different direction from a build standpoint, uh, but I guess, but it's motivated by what style of RP do I want to do? Mm -hmm. So between between the five players, Danny and I have the most experience, and I built Roland to be more of a protector, um, and I play him kind of in a background role a lot of the time because I want the new people to you know have fun doing what they want to do, and he's just like, cool, I'll make you breakfast, that kind of thing. Um, but I find that taking a back seat doesn't necessarily help people, doesn't make room for people to flourish so much as, uh, maybe if I were to make a character that was a bit more ad adept at investigating or, uh, playing the, the espionage game or something, 
maybe that would engage people more frequently or easily or something. So I would have made him maybe more of a commander type of player as opposed to like a sticky tank that I've mm -hmm. done. Or I'm shit, maybe I would have made him a completely different like spy, Jason Bourne style kind of guy. Cherie, what about you? What would you have done differently? I like now that we have gotten where we are, I feel like I built my character appropriately for the campaign mm -hmm. that we are running. I think it helps to understand your character better. Um, now that I know her a little bit better, I understand the rogue overall better. I, think set, that, yeah. I don't know that I would have changed a lot. I think that I just wish that I understood it better earlier so that I could have leveraged it earlier more. on. Yeah. Yeah. Because it took a, okay. me a while to like, figure out the mechanics. Yeah. And like, there are a couple of things that I have that I like never used and could have been helpful mm -hmm. <laughs> earlier. Danny, what would you have done differently? Is there uh, I I, I love Sprocket's build. I, I love the character. Uh, I just wish I established his backstory a little bit more because I always kind of put him on the back burner a little bit and played a more secondary role or like give him a backstory that was more relevant to the story. But otherwise, we haven't really explored it too much. Yeah. And that's something we can take a note of going forward is finding opportunity to do more of that uh, in the remaining adventure we have left. Hannah, would you have played a wizard if we did this again? Um, No, definitely not. I would um, most likely have played a barbarian. What? So would you still try and make them a very rich girl throwing I'm like a like a rage you. tantrum? Oh, or? That's, that's that's what I would sure. have done for I, sure. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't yes. have the. I didn't have the opportunity to say no because I was in the DM at the time. But the having a uh, uh, you need to be at a certain poverty level to have the motivation to be an adventurer. And having mm -hmm. Hannah having Holly Reese having mechanical access to her family's money early in the campaign, like bypassed a lot of stuff that if I could have been like, OK, your family's rich, but you're the black sheep and you don't get access to the daddy's purse um, would have maybe changed how certain things worked a little bit like Hannah fucking having like just 10,000 gold pieces in her pocket right now that I still can't account for. Uh, I'm definitely reporting you to the IRS for embezzlement. Um, and every time I'm like, what about your spell components? She's just like, money! <laughs> <laughs> the best spell components. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ian, Ian, what about you? <laughs> okay, so very clearly, I would have, I'd go full Riz. 100%. Full All Riz. Riz. 100%. Yes, because this is what I would do. I would pretend to be everything that Fen is, but not actually cool be people. any of it. I would be Flynn Rider from Tangle. So, yeah. so for Flynn Rider, oh, oh my god, that's funny because that's basically that's Wilhelm. Like that's that's who Wilhelm is. But I would be like dashing Douglas Fairbanks, like fucking yeah. handsome as shit, and like amazing. So, so the class make a but note: like, the next time we play D and D together, the class you want to play is called the Hexblade. Yeah, Hexblade for are, sure. Oh they are the charisma sword fight guy. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. who he, he All, should be. Yeah, yeah. He you basically be like a cad. He should be the kind of guy who drives a jaguar. Yeah, and like pretends yeah, we'll, to be a badass. We'll, we'll but really has nothing to. Next time up. we play, we'll do a short campaign so you can I, chase the Hexblade without too much commitment, and you might fall yeah. in love. I'm yeah. gonna try real hard not to envision like some twisted version even more twisted version of andrew tate no oh, i want to be i no. want to be han solo not gross. with yeah i want to be han solo who actually has the smallest penis yeah. <laughs> um, that's who i should play okay we're in this we're, campaign we're down to our last three questions that sounds um, good poka Cheryl has another one on discord i have oh, another one for, for everyone what is one thing you admire about another player dm and what is one thing you find annoying about them? Um, annoying. Okay. I, I don't want to risk our group dynamic, 
So if people aren't comfortable saying something annoying about each other, you can everyone can make their annoying thing about me if you so choose. Um, Nate, you can start. What is one thing you admire about another player slash DM, and what is one thing you find annoying about them? Okay, and I'm assuming this is in the context of D and D, not not on a personal level. <laughs> I just want to bring yeah. it. Yeah. It's yeah. Totally yeah. Okay in the context of the previous Fen question, Fen only. It's totally okay if everyone thinks Fen is annoying. <laughs> okay, I, get I appreciate it. that. No, <laughs> appreciate it's, that. It, it's not about the character. It's about it yeah. specifically says play. It's totally okay if everybody player. thinks Ian is annoying because <laughs> yeah. the way I play Fen, I get yeah. it. Okay, so um, this is a all right. I want to pick. Anna for this analysis. Oh shit! Okay. <laughs> no, um, uh, Hannah, I love your commitment to your character. You play Holly just ah, chef's kiss, um, immaculately. You're so good at it. Like you flip in and out of it all the time, and it's like I don't know what to say to this NPC. Holly's got it. She's she'll figure it out. And you always have something to say. You always do. Yes. Um. So big kudos. Big big kudos. Like acting chops coming through. Hundred and ten percent. Um. The one thing the about oh yeah the one thing about that is like me coming from like a power gamer slash video game like long time video gamer. Um. <laughs> I have never seen such opposing instincts <laughs> to any given situation. Yeah, that's true. I'm not saying you're wrong because definitively you have been right to do certain things. I'm just saying that from my from my own personal experience, I'm like I would do the exact opposite in this situation. She's a theater nerd. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. like and Holly Reese as a character shouldn't be an adventurer, and Hannah yeah. plays her like someone <laughs> who has no who, business. What? Yes. <laughs> She just happens to be yeah. able to blow up a building with her mind. <laughs> Who is the most powerful person in the party? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, so, by orders of magnitude. So, like, all of my natural instincts are telling me, like, this is so wrong. But you, but all the more credit to you for making it work and making me believe it. So, it. that's that's my yeah. thing. Seconded. Shuri. Thank you. What about uh, you? So I like I think typically like there isn't really anything about any of us that I'm like uh I feel like the only example I have and I, I'm sorry Hannah it was like it was your Ollie like the fact that she rolled all of those stuff and she got to keep that fucking dragon up. oh my god <laughs> yeah we were all very concerned that we're like are we gonna have to hand all of our treasure over to this fucking like, dragon what the hell is gonna happen to this like you can't take him back to our house. So, yeah, so I will say I remember that, like, in the moment that got, like, actually tense on, like, a yeah. personal level where I was like, like no. are they mad at each other? <laughs> like, um, but it is one thing. Ollie is going to be canon in all future campaigns in the Sword Coast where he's essentially, like, I'm going to make him a mass lord of Waterdeep. He's going to be a dragon cool. who is... Because he's a blue dragon, and blue dragons are canonically the smartest dragons. So he's going to play the long game and be like, I don't need to conquer the city. I will gain power naturally through... Uh, yeah, through and he made it, like, inside the bubble. Like, yeah. usually, because it's down, he's, like, he's in, and now yeah, he could be the only one inside. Originally, his, his, his purpose was just to demonstrate that something had made it inside the bubble, and that's, like, a major clue about some stuff that you... I don't no. think you all have picked up on, uh, nope. but um, no, 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 no. Yeah, but no, no, no. yeah, I love what ended up happening. Hey, Francis. Yeah, um, I, I like, will. Uh, I will say that when we ended that session after I got the dragon, I legit like immediately went to Cameron and I was like, "Listen, if they're all gonna be really pissed, in <laughs> all seriousness, we don't have to do this." Because <laughs> I okay? didn't want anyone to be upset. <laughs> Yeah. Aww. Those are my fries, you dick. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> like in that moment, it did get tense, and it wasn't like, like I think at the mo at the time, like I was like legitimately upset. But I, like Cameron was like, it's not gonna affect the game, and I was like, oh, all 
right, let's fine. Then all <laughs> is forgiven. Who cares? Yeah, as long, yeah all is forgiven. Yeah. I was like, I was like yeah, did you just win a campaign? Yeah, yeah. did God you just invite like, a TPK? Yeah, yeah. Um, um, Danny. That was so funny. Um, oh, and wait, I feel yeah. like, um, as far as like something that like I absolutely love, I love how Danny plays Sprocket. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Sprocket <laughs> hysterical and yeah. in all of his Second. interactions like his just honesty and we're like shut up yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah i've had I've, I've had a lot of fun bouncing off with danny sprocket yeah. and gelzar like that was earlier we were talking about like scripted mm -hmm. stuff sprocket and gelzar's like relationship well i think we've talked about it before that that's totally unscripted i think danny in your mind you were like I want to, like, Sprocket's such a nice guy. I want to have one person that he just fucking hates for no reason. <laughs> but, like, you developed it into this, oh, it's like my ex. Like, we're bitter exes and we're, yeah. we're super similar and stuff. Yeah, I love that stuff. That was great. Thanks. Uh, Danny, what about you? For uh, The question was, uh, like, a compliment and a, a complaint about another player or DM. Yeah, def definitely social interactions are a lot of fun. I like kind of taking point on it whenever, when anyone else is like, I don't know what to do. She's like, here, I got an idea and I will go for it. So like, that's Money! very fun. <laughs> Money. Money's the answer. Like, like, I absolutely love it when another player makes a decision that turns bad for everyone. I'm like, cool, pressure's off. I don't have to touch that one. Yeah. Yeah. Cough, cough, rolling. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Ollie's made a couple of those decisions where she's just like yes, Ollie too. Every, yeah. Everyone's had everyone's had a turn. Oh in the God, yeah. Well, Alu, Alu, we got to the lighthouse, and I was like, Nah. Yeah, yeah. I'm that, just. I choose not to. I was like, it, Fucking if, shit, man. Yeah. yeah. If, if and and the party doesn't do it anymore. Yeah. But if I had a like a bit of feedback early in the campaign, it was the desire so often for one player in the party to not participate in a fight and it's like all this is doing is making this last longer <laughs> like just mm -hmm. fucking get in the room and stab someone yeah oh man that's good <laughs> yeah <laughs> or or like uh uh, uh... God damn, I, I just thought of another example. Oh, or, yeah, when we were talking about murdering uh, that whole room full of scrying people right in front of Feather, uh, Featherfoot. Yeah. That was also very funny. And immediately, like, like, oh, yes, your guys are bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> don't, don't ingrate. One of those, like, moments when I was like, a little less honesty <laughs> would be nice. <laughs> oh, I, I, I love it. Spock has got bad charisma, so he's not going to filter himself. and like, oh, I'll just tell everyone and everything. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not only does he have bad social skills, he just doesn't understand prompts. Like yeah. exactly, the dude grew up in a lab. Yeah, no social skills. <laughs> the only gripe is sometimes combat runs long if we take a minute to decide. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it happens. Mm -hmm. Shit's stressful. Awesome. What about Hannah? Um. So compliment is. Um, that I don't know, like, I've just been enjoying this all <laughs> around. Stuck. I didn't, um, honestly, when we started, I, there would be, there would be moments before, but prior to Cameron DMing, when we first started this campaign, I would get so anxious and not want to do it that I like would be crying before oh. we would oh. get on camera. Um, I get that, Hannah. We were feeling the same way over so, it. So, um, yeah, but no, it's just with Cameron taking over and, and our characters' development and relationships and whatnot, it's it's become a ton of fun, and I look forward to this now. Um, complaint? I think my, I guess my one complaint is, I think partially because when we started with our original DMs, I think the story like went one way. And then when Cameron came on board, it's gone a little bit of a different way. And like there are, there are moments where I, I feel like there have been so many side quests that I like, I can't, I've struggled to keep up even with like certain notes that I've taken. Like there are moments where I forget that, Oh, our whole main goal is going after Never Ember's treasure, and not so you're not alone. Something else. You're yeah. not alone. No, you're totally Scope and not. Scale. That's my only. That's my. That's my main. I guess my main complaint. Yep. 
Yeah, really. it, it, yeah. It, is, it is funny to me. Part of this campaign has gone backwards where you've done certain things before you know why you needed to do those things. You just happen to be like, let's go do this. And yeah. like, there's going to be a point in the campaign where you're going to get information and you're going to be like, oh, fuck, we're like 75% of the way done with this thing we need to do because we did all this side shit first. Yeah. Uh, but right now, the context isn't there for sure. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, as she brought that up, I was like, because you've mentioned a couple of times, like, how there are things that we've done that, like, we don't, like, we're not putting the clues together at Yeah, because I'll, like, I'll look at the chart, the flow chart that Cameron made, and to me, it's just, like, it's gibberish. Like, yep. I, don't, I don't know what I'm looking at. It's just words. Yeah, I'm not looking at, yeah, I totally get that, too, because, like, I look at it, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember that, I remember that, but it doesn't mean I don't know connect them yeah yeah, yeah. Not i don't know how it's connected yeah yep um we'll go to ian and then we can come back to the flow chart at the end of it where you can if you want to ask me any questions about the flow chart we can do that uh but yeah. ian what is your uh something you admire about another player slash dm what is something you find annoying about them so i have two compliments i'll don't worry i'll be quick first sheree stole mine the way danny plays as spev yeah for a rookie like that is how I should play. I look at the way Danny plays and I think this is how I should play. This is like I it's an example. This I'm always impressed with how thoughtful he is and how he plays. It's like I wish I could play that way and I try to play because of the way he plays. He also makes me feel bad about myself, so thank you. Um <laughs> I'm not trying to. I'm just <laughs> No, you're very good. I, like it's instructive. Happened. It's a good thing. It's a compliment. Yeah. Uh, so the other thing is uh Nate and Roland. You're always a bro. You're always down to throw down. Me, I appreciate that. Someone else who's like willing to get and mix, get in there and mix it up. That I love. I love that you're there to like be part of the stupid story that I created that's dumb and I sort of imposed that on you, so thank you for that. All right. um, the only complaint that I... And believe it or not, my only complaint is not actually related to Cameron or the DM <laughs> because I already <laughs> talked about how I like how <laughs> Cameron's actually DM. Uh, my only complaint is fucking Alu and Cherie refuses to acknowledge Fen's existence and have a crush on him the way that he desperately wants her to. <laughs> and she will not do it. Can we talk about that for a second? Because I got that vibe God. early on. and like, Yes, yeah, so did I. I now Alu kind of gives me a bisexual vibe. Like, she, So me too. Okay. Uh, but it's I very remember, concerning for me I as very, her actual real IRL husband. I'm worried. I I she's I so committed. There, there have been moments, there have been moments where, like, even though Holly Reese had a prior relationship with Wilhelm, she has had a little bit of a crush on Fen, but it's more so anytime they fought together. Yeah, because... That's when they vibe. Because forbidden, because he's like a... Like a oh, she'll never so admit that. I don't know so I so yeah, I for Fen. Right? I want to talk yeah. about that, because... We, and Fen has no interest, because he's, like, totally into Alu. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. If, Earlier on, we talked about biggest surprise of the campaign. I, I got to go back because I forgot about this. I buried it deep. I did not have anything to do with Holly's crush on Wilhelm. That was something that she came up with. And I guess Max okayed it that they spent a night together that I had zero input on at the beginning. And that's okay. So this is then this is complaint number two for me is I feel like I'm we're with Holly Reese's backstory and probably other characters' backstories, we spent a lot of time sending that info to Max ahead of time. Yeah, but it was all done in a silo and it was like instead of never, it mm. like yeah. never came it, it, about. It, it's Nothing something, ever appeared. It's something yeah. I've learned of, and like other campaigns, we essentially do group character building so people like learn of that stuff out of character. But right. then we, I feel like we've essentially dropped the Holly Wilhelm thing. But it's we funny have. because it's fundamentally incompatible with who Wilhelm as a person, and the party doesn't really know that. Um, yeah. Hannah and Danny might remember from our charity live stream with the B team, like some of Wilhelm's stuff that he has going on. Um, but like, yeah, it, it's it's funny that that was a thing. Because that... I like I I brought that up to you off off camera at one point, and you were like, "What? What the fuck are you?" <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. it's it's something we could lean back into if you wanted to but i i feel like holly is very no. much into her dragons and stuff yeah um, she's she's all on board what? for our tour now too so yeah, yeah. 
given that like obviously i and ian and i weren't a part of that like separate stream what is the the okay. little major spoiler that, that you want to know yeah. ready oh boy the audience yeah. already knows wilhelm okay. swing pike is not a real person yeah he, i knew this okay he is an alias and an identity for someone else that is has his own agenda with what's going on that's the reason that his room is so warded that's the reason that he's uh, early on in the campaign he was sending out messages to someone that the party didn't know about um, it's the reason that he freaked out when holly Rees like told him that you got drunk and you slept with me one time um mm -hmm. Fuck it. Do, like, he's an NPC that's not going to matter. Do we want to talk about his backstory for a second? Yeah, I just yeah, don't think Cameron has such a juicy character to, like, sink his teeth into. It's annoying. It's annoying. Um, <laughs> so the reason that he has this is because there's a feat or a, a background. I think it's called Charlatan. And it basically yeah, gives you advantage background. on persuasion or deception checks if you are playing in a, if you're uh, in disguise as someone else. So my idea for the character is, oh, well, he'll just always be in, in disguise. Wilhelm is not a real person, so his name is Carl Dreffer, and he will always be in disguise as Wilhelm. And he, well, he so one, he is older than he seems. He puts on a lot of makeup. I, the way I describe him, he's like in his late 30s, early 40s. He's kind of a body that's gone to seed a little paunchy. Um, he's always in disguise to appear a little younger than he is. Uh, which is, again, another reason why it was, like, kind of funny that Hannah chose Holly Rees to bang him. Um, <laughs> and then he is a married man with two kids. His wife died um, of... Okay, I'll, let, let me go into my notes. Um, <laughs> this is like NSFW all of a sudden. In the reality, fuck happened Carl here? Dreffer is a 40-year-old father of two. His daughter, Amadra, is 12. His son, Cyrus, is 9. Are They're in the care of his parents in the town of Sicomber, which is near Waterdeep. He, he married his wife, Adira, when he was young. She passed away, and she was sick, and they couldn't afford the expense of the spell Greater Healing to, to help her. They were trying to travel over land he's a he's a uh, a trader by by trade um and he traveled and had adventures with his wife she died on the road because they couldn't get a uh, greater restoration on her um but he is uh in disguise to protect his family because her family is from the uh uh nation of Amun, and they disapproved of their marriage she basically ran away uh, like not him connect, like taking her from her they family. Eloped. She eloped, but she was like the adventurer of the two. Um, and with her dead, her family is coming after Carl. So Carl is living under just like Wit Witsec basically as Wilhelm. And that's why he's in so tight with the Harpers. And because oh. of protecting his family and other things he wants to do, he has tied himself in with this group of adventurers and he's hoping to use them to further his personal ends. I'm still pushing that thread along, but now he's an NPC instead of a member of the party. So like when I say that he was mm -hmm. perfect for this campaign, like I, I would have loved to have played yeah. him in Waterdeep Dragon Heist, but, um, but that, that didn't happen, but it's still been, uh, it, it's been fun to tease those bits and pieces. And then basically in the charity stream, um, I we saw Wilhelm at the beginning and he immediately takes off his disguise <laughs> kit uh, to greet the B team who knows who he really is. So oh, the, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's that's how that got revealed. Yeah. That's um, great. That's funny. So, yeah, that's Carl. That's Wilhelm. But in character. Hi, you know Carl. That. Yeah. Carl. Yeah. Um, I love that. I guess next question, unless anyone's got anything else they want to. No, I just no. fuck you, Alu. God damn it! Next, <laughs> Come on. Next question. Uh, from Grump Suck on Reddit, how has everyone enjoyed Grump the process suck. of doing an actual play versus just playing D and D? Um, Wait, what? Repeat so, that. So, basically, how has doing a show been different than just playing D and D? From my perspective, it's a lot more fucking work. Yeah. You chose to, though. No, I That's know. Fair. Yeah. 
Um, uh, yeah, for, I think for us, I think it's not much different. In fact, like the fact that it's getting recorded barely registers for me. Can I? Um, because this is how we would be playing it anyway through Discord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we don't live in the same place as everybody else. Can I take this in a weird direction? So yeah. this is, it actually has affected me significantly because it has affected my professional life. Oh, strangely really? Strangely enough. Yeah, because I, I like upgraded my streaming gear and my camera hmm. and like my lighting. And I actually use that for work now. <laughs> so like, I'm like so much better off for work as a result of this oh that's I'm, funny yeah because i'm online and like i am not someone who ever likes being on camera fucking ever because i look like shit on camera and i i hate it but like the only reason i'm comfortable on camera and because i'm comfortable talking in front of people all the time is because of this kind of stuff oh wow so like me so like this kind of like actually made a, like a difference in my actual lived experience in life so like yeah there you go that's yeah, a right thing. on that's Yay. cool that's cool that's so you nice. it also improved like my gear i invested more money yeah. in my shit so that i looked better and like could present better and like, so yeah there you go right on i dig it uh let's see for me some days i am just there is absolutely no reason why I can't be here, but some days I'm just not mentally a hundred percent. We um, knew, we knew Nate. Yeah, <laughs> yes, we saw that. Yeah, um, but like in a, in a normal home home game or whatever, you can just be like, "Yeah, I'm I'm here. I'm gonna chill out, and I'm gonna just do like minimum stuff." But when I'm on camera, I feel like I have to be on. So like, whatever version you're getting of me that episode, it is more than real life, Nate. Yeah. Because we are doing a show. Same. So, yeah. Some days it matches. They're about even. I feel, I'm feeling like I'm presenting. And then some days I am just faking it. Well, Filling okay. That shit Can in. I, I don't want to take too much time. But also, just for everybody's knowledge, we do this at Sunday night. Yeah. yeah. So, like, there's Monday morning, like, thing for all of us. So, for me, mm -hmm. particularly, I don't know. I don't want to speak for anybody else. But for me, it's like, Monday morning is a shit show. And it's always Sunday night. It's tough for me so it mm -hmm. takes effort mm -hmm. so i don't yeah. know if that's true for anybody else that's... yeah it it can be not so much for work but because cameron is a goddamn machine and so like monday wednesdays and fridays we're getting up at 5 30 to fucking run in the morning before work so it does get to a point where when we're playing while I'm enjoying it, there's also a small anxious part of me that's like, okay, Cameron, like we are, we got to wrap this up because you need me to get up in the morning for you. Speaking of wrap up, I think that to me as a DM, that's the biggest difference is in a campaign that's off camera. You don't super care about pacing stuff. If you want to spend a whole episode shopping or a whole episode, like kind of doing nothing but downtime activities, you can on camera. I'm conscious of like, I need to keep the pace going. I, that's one of the reasons we don't do it live. I edit things down. And I don't do a ton of editing, but I basically cut out filler or technical stuff or if we're asking, like, the same question over and over again or there's confusion or things like that. Um, so being, I think doing this on camera has made me more mindful of pacing. And because of that, I've gotten better at pacing in my home, like, my off-camera games. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll let <clears throat> Hannah be the judge of that. <laughs> okay. I, I will so, say it's super cool when people come to my other stream and, <laughs> and ask me questions about Sprocket or ask me about the game. I love oh, yeah. that. Yeah. Like, like whenever someone asks us a question about it or like talks to us about it outside the game and we're, I realize other people are watching it and enjoying what we're producing, that feels mm -hmm. great. That's true. Yeah, like, that when, awesome I, when you guys. Feeling. When you guys do video game content, like like oh, I, I Tom, get out of here, Tom, get, get out, out of here, here Tom. Tom. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes. I asked for Tom, and Tom appears. It's great. Awesome. Um, anyway, Tom. I when I like log into like when you do Tears of the Kingdom streams and like Cheryl is there, it's cool. Like because she's oh, like she's asked questions about our our you know our campaign. Our, it's like yeah. I can 
contribute to that. I know she watches. And yeah. I think that's pretty cool. The yeah. idea that what we are doing, none of us are professional actors. Hannah and Cherie have acting experience. None of us are like professional writers, as far as I know. The fact that we find a way to entertain people enough that they're willing to sit down and watch us for two fucking hours mm -hmm. is what the fuck? really oh, cool. uh, a sad note about the state of our audience. <laughs> and I hope they get help. It's I mostly a commentary. I'm them. sure it's entirely down to Danny being competent to deal I think is the answer. I, I yeah. just listen to a lot of D and D podcasts. That's my secret. I just, just listen to so much. Yeah. That's the only like, thing. I go into a D and D session. I'm like, I don't know how to do this, and then I watch Danny. Is oh, that's how yeah. you do it. Yeah. That's why people watch. That's yeah. just absorb like f ten to fifteen hours of D and D content okay. every week. Last, nerd, that's la weird. oh, have you finished campaign one of um? Uh, uh, not yes, it is so oh, good. You're you're ahead of me. I'm on episode like ninety eight. I'm so oh, okay. Cool. Okay, last question. Last, last Stay question. on track. I got a dog. I got to uh, take outside. Moist opportunity thirty four <laughs> on Reddit. That's a great day. Ugh. What's your opinion of the word Whoa. moist? What, what's what's sad day. here is like so so default Reddit usernames. When you don't pick your own username, it's word word number. That might mm. be a default Reddit. Like that might not have yeah. been a picked username. That's but, fantastic though. Anyway. <laughs> Funny. Moist Opportunity oh, 34 God. on Reddit says, <laughs> I know you've shared assets and stuff on the subreddit before, especially the Waterdeep Wazoo cover pages. I wanted to ask what inspired you for the stories you put together in the articles. Oh, um, that's a good one. I, I love that question, actually, because, yeah. like, yeah, aside from, like, that's another thing, going back to what's different between being on camera and off camera, I think being on camera made me up production value of stuff, Fantastic. and I've taken that into off camera stuff. Um, so the Waterdeep Wazoo is a newspaper that I basically publish the front page of every in-game campaign day. Um, and those stories, usually they are recaps of the party's previous misadventures. Um, so oftentimes, like after the Growlhoon Massacre, I spent like, uh, like three or four days of newspaper articles, like just the fallout from that stuff. But uh, then, it's also a mix of just funny little news stories I come up with like filler uh about a maybe 25 percent of it is clues for things to do um like for example i think the you went to the lighthouse and you did blue alley because of the newspaper um which like I, I'm, I'm essentially what i was trying to do was foreshadow that eventually you need to do these things you did it a little early so you don't know why you thought there were eyes of the stone of galore there there weren't but there were other things there that are useful for the final of the campaign um, and then the the fourth part of those stories are uh, adventures from my other campaigns. Because in my mind, in the my D and D world that I have built with my different campaigns, this is one shared universe. So the stuff like I've been hinting at stuff that the Dragon of Icepire Peacap does. I've been hinting at the Rhyme of the Frostmaiden and stuff. The different campaigns interact. That's with each other. what determined whether I got my sword right. That was like yeah, like it was a crossover. The, the, the oh, yeah, whether you got yeah. Yeah, they yeah. delivered your sword. Right. Yeah, that yeah, was hashtag, like, uh, the, hashtag the went Thanos. Stuff. Yeah. Right. Um, Thank Albert Potate and his wonderful friends. Yeah, yeah, Albert Potate. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, what, that's what inspired me for the stories. And I liked it. And I, I've done that in other campaigns. Like, we just did an epic shout out uh, advertisement for the Discord if you join. We had 19 players, four mm -hmm. tables, four dungeon masters, three headquarters people wrangling everyone. And I built. 53 infernal war machines for it them to go impressive. mad max on each other and that's like i just i enjoy doing that stuff i it, i found it really rewarding when the players in this campaign went to the Waterdeep wazoo and was like hey they mentioned the uh this weird artifact and they mentioned this location let's go check it out that to me is the stuff that makes the world feel real along with like the npcs coming back and interactions and building history there the newspaper is another part of that verse similitude that I, I find super satisfying as a dungeon master. Oh my God. Our DM just used the word verisimilitude. verisimilitude. Yeah. I bow down to you, sir. <laughs> you have, you have made my day. I thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> ho hopefully you all felt the same way. I mean, I, oh, yeah. I do it mostly for me, but I, I hope you all get a kick out of that stuff too.
I do. For sure. It got me a sword. I am happy. Yeah. 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 We look in the paper. We're like, oh, cool. There's something cool. There's something there. And there and there is. Yeah. Um, so that is the last of our listener questions. Does anyone have anything else you want to ask or anything you want me to clarify before we call this an episode? We've, or we've been on for two hours at this point, but I think yeah. we have time for one more thing. I don't have any new questions. I just want to say thank you specifically to Cameron for rescuing this from dustbin of history. You did a great job. <laughs> Really? I know I've been an asshole for most of the campaign. So no, have you met Cameron? Have you met him? <laughs> That's true. Ian? That's true. Is it fair. See, this is why I this is why I like yeah. Holly Reese because she understands Finn. Yes, you've been an asshole, Finn, but I still thank you for you know sticking with it and being stubborn. And allowing thank you all for playing. Yeah. Like when you all have fun playing, that's the most fun I have. Yep, players yeah. having fun is GMs having fun, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Shout out to all of the people who actually do watch this. Like, thanks yeah. for watching. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you so yeah. much. It's so you. cool. The only one I know for sure is Cheryl. Really? So thank you very much. But yeah. Like, yeah. thank you everyone for watching yeah. and commenting on the video. Yeah, yeah. Makes us feel like we're doing a good job. Yeah, feels good. Even if it's yeah. not, because I would if it was just me to hang out with Cameron, like or Nate, like fuck you guys. Like I would not be here. Yeah. The <laughs> fact that you guys watch, like that's what. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think on that note, we're going to call this Q&A done. Uh, if you're watching this, that means we've basically been on break. Uh, the next week will be, or the next episode, which will come out two weeks after this comes out, um, will be us picking things back up right after the time travel arc, where the party is going to see if they can track down two more eyes of the Stone of Galore. Um, they'll have to figure out where those are and do some heisting. Yeah, uh, yeah I look forward to it. Thanks again for watching, everyone. Thanks uh, to the players for playing. Um, and we'll catch you all on the next one. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. We love you.